Jackson! See you, John Calipari. That made it might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. A three seed loses to a 14 seed. Kentucky goes down to Oakland. Arkansas baseball wins in Auburn. Kansas gets the beneficiary of a official's call. It's going to be a good morning. We got a lot to discuss here on a Fast Break Friday. Fastball, Fast Break Friday. I know a lot of you want to talk about Hagen Smith, Will McIntyre, Gabe Gackle's performance last night. And I know a lot of you want to talk about how shot your bracket is, which there's some odd like point zero 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 three six percent of brackets in all the world are still perfect. Understandably so, after Oakland wins. There's some other upsets. Not a great day. Not great. Let, let's not let's not overdo it. It's not a great day yesterday. It really wasn't. We're going to talk about all that coming up, plus some more topics in just a bit here on a Fastball and Fast Break Friday. I had a friend that showed me his betting sheet yesterday on the Bet Saracen app. He went 6-for-6. Six six. I had another friend that went 0-for-6. But this guy went 6-for-6. Six six. He won like 260 bucks yesterday, and he's going to press it. He's going to roll it over today. He wants to keep on winning and when it comes to college basketball, March Madness, prop bets, when it comes to anything you want to bet on here in the natural state, college-wise, you're going to find it on the Bet Saracen app. It's Arkansas's number one and best sports betting app. Doesn't matter the sporting event, you're going to find it. You've got, again, college basketball. You've got NBA. You've got Arkansas baseball. So many things to bet on right now. It's Vegas, Arkansas style. So take advantage of it. Go to BetSaracen.com or download it on the Apple Store or Google Play. So I'm out of the bracket contest. I had Kentucky win it all. JT and Hot Springs, I think, mad at me this morning because I told him that. I'm so happy, though. I'm happy that I helped gift them a loss because when I pick a team to win the national championship, I have, to my knowledge, I've won a, a bracket challenge one time in high school. It's been, let's see, I was in high school 10-plus years ago. It's been 10-plus years since I've won any sort of bracket challenge. But I'm completely okay. I would much rather, much rather see a bunch of upsets than win money or win a contest. And we didn't see a ton yesterday. We really didn't see, again, a bunch of great games. There was like four out of 16 that I would qualify as great games. But the biggest one being Kentucky going down to Oakland. And there is a lot to discuss. John Calipari's future, what's going to happen there. We got to talk about Ryan Gokey, who was unbelievable. Or excuse me, Jack Gokey last night, who was awesome. Uh, this is a guy that has shot the majority of his tips all year have been three-pointers. He like You look at his stat line before the game, season totals, he's jacked 335 field goals. Christian, guess how many of those were three-pointers? Oh, man. I would say... Uh, Just throw a guess out 300. There. 327 wow. of those were three-pointers. 335 attempts. 327 were three-pointers. And this guy is on the minds and, the, and really the, uh, <laughs> the happy list of many people outside of Lexington and throughout the Bluegrass State, which... I'm happy they lost. I'm happy that Kentucky fans are shedding tears, not just last night, but this morning. You got to be able to get by the first round of the NCAA tournament. They lost to St. Peter's a few years ago, and then they fall short to Oakland last night. And Greg Campy, who is the Oakland head coach, has known John Calipari forever. They've been friends for a while. Now, I think Campy's, I think this is his 40th year to be the head coach there. Cal's been at Memphis, he's been at UMass, he's now in Lexington. I don't know how much longer. Um, I think he's going to get fired. Now, I kind of, I, I got to be honest. I'll, I'll disclose. I've talked out of both sides of my mouth. I said a couple weeks ago, I thought Cal was going to get fired. Now it's going to happen. I called my shot. There is no way he survives this year. No way. He's done. They have won. Listen to this stat. They have won one NCAA tournament and one SEC tournament game since 2019. He's toast. See you later. I don't care if it's $33, $34 million. Gone. And I know the buyout, assistance coaches buyout, bringing a guy in, it's going to cost about 50 mil. He's done. He's gone. So I called that earlier. It happened, just like I called Saban's retirement. But, again, talked out of both sides of my mouth. I also picked, I was hedging my bets of sort. 
I picked Kentucky to win the national championship, which they did not for obvious it, reasons. It's one thing to lose in the tournament, but it seems like too often they lose in the first round. That 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 can't happen. I mean, a program like Kentucky to go that many years and just continuously get bounced in the first round against I know these are good teams that are in the tournament, but you can't lose to Oakland. You and can't you lose said, to St. Peter's. You can't lose to teams like that. And you said a program like Kentucky, and that's the most important element of what you just said. It's Kentucky. There is an expectation, and Cal hasn't met it. In fact, he he is one of the most overrated college basketball coaches of all time. They have won one national championship with him at the helm. Now, I know they've been close other years. I know they've had other Elite Eight and Final Four runs, but they have won one since he has taken over in Lexington, Kentucky, at Rupp Arena. He is, and especially the last five years, they haven't done squat. Let me remind you, one NCAA tournament win since 2019. One. That is all that matters to the Kentucky faithful. And he's failed time and time again. He's done. It's only a matter of time. Some big wig down there or up there, wherever you're <laughs> wherever you're at this morning, We'll figure out the buyout situation, maybe dwindle it down a little bit. Maybe he's willing to do that, but this this is not going to continue in Lexington. He's going to get fired. He's going to get some of that buyout, if not all that buyout, and they're going to transition. The new question becomes, who's Kentucky going to hire? Who are the Wildcats going to go out and get? Man, There's a lot of good coaches that have retired lately. Williams and, and Wright Will and... You think Will Way would be sufficient enough? <laughs> I don't know that. He, really, I don't uh, think his name is big enough. McNeese for, State just got walloped. I know. Yesterday, that just was what popped. In, actually, what, what popped in my mind wasn't 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 any better. Uh, you know, <laughs> let's just say I hope Musselman gets a deal wrapped up soon. I, I, and I think that's a question we'll post throughout the morning. Would Kentucky consider Eric Musselman and his track record? Is he big enough? Again, a lot of speculation right now. Must is being linked, according to Jeff Borzillo of ESPN.com, to the SMU job. We got a lot to get to That's, that's weird. this SMU morning. SMU job. Yeah. JT and Hot Springs' beef is that he picked McNeese State and Sanford. I, I'm going to be honest. I've, I I listened to Chuck and went with his McNeese State pick. Now, I, I fully I, I went with Sanford, but they got screwed last night. They should have won that game. 100%. That was a block. They would have come down and banged a three or gotten a layup in the game. They would have won. The Sanford Bulldogs got hosed last night against the Kansas Jayhawks. Plenty to discuss, not just about that, but others as well. Hey, there's going to be plenty to discuss next Friday at Mock Legal Solutions. They're Family of Lawford's grand reopening. Jackie Mock, Matt Mock, and their team are going to be showing you their new updated facility. Drop in and check out their new office. It's the same space. There's just a lot more location. Ruskin and Zach are going to be there from 2 to 6. Their newly renovated meeting room. The Donnie Davis Memorial Conference Room. Mark your calendars for the grand reopening at 3401. 79th Street in Fort Smith. Mock Legal Solutions. Real advice. Reasonable price. Chuck's going to join us. It takes 30. Scott Tabert, 720. And then also Lang Whitman, the Railbird, 333, coming up at 842. All that to get to here on a Fast Break Friday. Stay with us. Jump in on the McClarty Daniel Hotline 2. Follow us on Twitter at Ty Sports Radio and at Tommy Craft ESPN. Hey, this is Cole Kubelik with ESPN and WJOX, and you're listening to The Morning Run. The best selection of RVs is now even better at Wheels RV in Springdale. Wheels RV has added Brinkley RVs to the already loaded lineup of Grand Design and Forest River products. See the Brinkley Model Z, the latest innovation in luxury fifth wheels. And like always, every new RV comes with a lifetime warranty so you can camp with confidence. So stop in and find out why Wheels has been voted best RV dealer year after year. Wheels RV, five miles west of exit 72 off of I-49 in Springdale. Seek, explore, discover with Wheels RV. This is the Morning Rush. We've got to show this. We are the University of Arkansas. 
Will your bracket be better than Matt Jones, Derek Ruskin, and the rest of the ESPN Arkansas team? Then prove it. Sign up for the HitThatLine.com Bracket Challenge presented by On The Mark Sports Bar and Grill in Fayetteville, 810 Billiards and Bowling in Fort Smith, and Shelter Insurance Agent Chris Dooley. Registration is easy. Just find the contest on HitThatLine.com. The HitThatLine.com Bracket Challenge is also brought to you in part by Walk On Sports Bistro, Century Bank of the Ozarks, Cafe Con Chisme, Links at Chaffee Crossing, and Foghorn's Wings. Drive a third row SUV that is style in motion with the 2023 Buick Enclave at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Right now, get $1,250 in total savings or 2.9% financing on a 23 Buick Enclave. The 23 Buick Enclave, designed for the road ahead and well-crafted for your refined taste. Test drive a new Buick Enclave and experience the new Buick at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Exit 11 off of I-540 in Fort Smith. Do you need help with your next project? Metters Lumber True Value is here to help. A family-owned business since 1936, the staff has more than 90 years of experience in construction and the hardware business. If they don't have what you need, they know how to get it, and they are more than happy to accommodate your special order. So whether it's building a new deck, a paint project around the house, or needing a new set of tools, Metters Lumber True Value has everything you need. With locations in Alma, Ozark, and Clarksville, and you can shop online at metterslumber.com. Metters Lumber True Value. Diamond Center is proud to present our inaugural Whiskey and Watches event. Now is your chance to get your hands on that timeless timepiece you've been dreaming of. Between now and Thursday, April 25th, in our Fort Smith store, call or stop by to pre-order your watch. Then join us on Thursday, April 25th, for a night of celebration featuring rare whiskeys, cigars, and luxury watches. This is your opportunity to add that watch that you've always had an eye on to your collection. For more information or to pre-order your watch today, give us a call. The Diamond Center, celebrating a legacy of love. Flu vaccines, both regular and high dose for seniors, are now available at Law's Drug Store in Fort Smith. Call 452-6116 to schedule your shot appointment. Usually there is no cost when covered by your insurance. Law's Drug has COVID vaccines, RSV vaccines for ages 60 plus. Pneumonia and tetanus shots are also available. Law's Drug Store, 6802 Rogers Avenue behind Outback Steakhouse. Law's Drug Store, open six days a week to safely care for you and your family. Come get you some. 2728 Townsend Avenue is your off-road and performance center headquarters. They've got everything from lift kits, wheels, LED light bars, UTV parts and accessories, winches and tires. Need general 4x4 repair? No problem. Come get you some has one of the largest 4x4 shops in the state. They do it all, from installing a bug shield to building some of the baddest off-road machines in the country. Call them today at 782-6833. That's 782-MUD. Or check them out online at cgysoffroad.com. Come get you some. At Dobson Fiber, we're helping you build stronger connections by bringing the fastest internet network available to your business. Why Fiber? Fiber internet provides reliable, symmetrical, blazing speeds. Without any interruptions or buffering, you can rely on Dobson for all your data needs. With Dobson Fiber as your premium internet provider, you can focus on the things that matter and the connections you build. To see if fiber is available to you, visit Dobson.net. Dobson Fiber, building stronger connections. How do I drive more traffic to my website? How do I increase my Google rankings? If these are just a few of the questions you have for your business, then we should talk. In addition to sports radio marketing, ESPN Arkansas can help your business be found online. From website design to geo-targeted campaigns, search engine marketing, social media management, streaming video campaigns, and much more. ESPN Arkansas is your digital marketing partner. Go to ESPNArkansasDigital.com for your free digital marketing audit or email us at sales at hitthatline.com to schedule an appointment your home for every razorback football basketball and baseball game espn 95.3 good morning tommy and the and the brain <laughs> Shot towards first base. Diving play by McLaughlin. Throws it to McIntyre. Covering. Got him. Hitting over. What a play. All your favorite podcasts in one place. The Hit That Line Podcast Network. Just search Hit That Line wherever you listen to podcasts. The number one baseball team in the country, your Arkansas Razorbacks, continued on their streak. Bad news. Lane Blocker entered the transfer portal. I love Lane Blocker. It's a little rock Christian kid. Went to... 
I guess Sunrise for a little bit. I thought he played with the tenacity and the defense, but some Arkansas news as we continue on here on this Fast Break and Fastball Friday. We'll get into both those subjects, talk more NCAA tournament, and then be joined by Chuck Barrett coming up. Got a text here on the McCarty Daniel Hotline from Corey, who's listening in Baton Rouge this morning. He's a diehard LSU fan, and he's like, is it better to watch Kentucky basketball lose or Alabama football? It's a great question. I think I think that most of you would say Kentucky basketball because that's more of our rival. But it's not too far off when Alabama fans have to endure what is so rare for them in football. When you think about how many losses they've averaged per year under Nick Saban since 2008, it's probably like one, maybe two. Maybe if you average out some of the bad years, and I say bad years relative to what Alabama usually is, it might be that. Here's the thing with that is, okay, Alabama might lose one or two games a year. Most of the time it was just one, but they'd still end up in the playoff. So it's like they might win, lose a game, but you know they're probably not going to lose again. Yeah, it's, right. it's just one of those things. Yeah, we'll get to some text here and get more messages. We got a good message on our video live stream, which you can always watch Facebook X, Twitter, or excuse me, <laughs> X and Twitter, same thing, uh, YouTube. Twitch and Instagram, this one comes from Cliff saying uh, they don't have that type of money c- to spend in Kentucky. Talking about Cal. I think they do, Cliff. I think you'll see a big win come up big for helping getting Cal out, out of Lexington. Hey, before we dive into all those topics, I want to tell you about our friends at Modular Orange. Now, if you want an example of a good website that Jordan and their team have made, go to usafireworks.org. This is my guy, Chris Brewer. Chris and I built a relationship last year. They got the best fireworks in all of Arkansas. And he needed an updated website. His website was well antiquated, out of date, and he needed help. And so, set him up with Jordan, and they helped him out. And it's awesome because it's not just guys like Chris and Edwin, but it's guys all and gals all over the state. And really outside the state, too. If you're a business owner or if you just need a website outside the state, they can help you, too. Now, they're located in northwest Arkansas, but here's the kicker. Here's the big thing you need to hear. 95 bucks a month. 95 bucks a month. This isn't like a five grand or a 10 grand upfront process. 95 bucks a month. You're not going to have any upfront cost. This is an incredible website maker. You need to go to modularorange.com. Again, many of our clients here at ESPN Arkansas and hitthatline.com have gone through this process. If you have a business, you need to check this out. And you don't like your website, I'm telling you, they do a great job. USAfireworks.org is a great example of what Modular Orange Jordan and their team can do for you. All right, let's get to a few of these texts, shall we, here on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. Bill in Northeast Arkansas bringing up Layden Blocker announcing exit from the Arkansas basketball program. Again, this one hurt for me. I love Layden. I think he's going to be a good college basketball player wherever he goes. I think he is going to be a guy that people or after he's athletic, he's gritty, still got to work on his shot. He's not the biggest guy either, probably about six feet, six one, but I just like the way he played. When Layden was out there, I never at any point thought, hmm, he's not giving 100%. Now, he's not the most talented. He's not the most skilled player when it comes to his offensive game. He was a good high school basketball player, top 50 in the country, but he he's raw as a freshman, like most freshmen are. You don't have the Reed Shepherds and the Dillinghams that coming in and just kill it right off the bat. They usually have to to go through some development and some process. Now, kind of like the Devo theme, was this a mutual? Was this Eric Musselman and the staff saying, hey, you're better off going elsewhere? Or it, was this solo? Did Lane Blocker say, you know what? I'm done. I'm out of here. I don't know. I think that I tend to think in these situations it's a combination of mutual. Like, I don't ever think must. Again, this is outside looking in. I don't ever think Musk just tells guy, you need to leave. You need to leave. I think what they tell him is, listen, we're bringing this guy, this guy, and this guy in. This is what you could be looking at minutes-wise this next year. It might be in your best interest to hit the portal. That is where I think what plays out behind the scenes with not just Arkansas basketball, but a lot of different Arkansas basketball programs. See, I don't think they should do that. I think, you know, Blocker's proven that he's got the talent, and he he deserves a shot. Not not to say you don't bring in other guys and all that, but 
I, I, I would be surprised if Blocker just up and left, like, oh, I'm not going to get to play as much because this year he didn't get to play that much either. It surprised me that he uh, made his decision to leave more, way more than, obviously, Devo deciding to leave. I just thought, you know, I want to know the reasoning. Like like you said, I don't think we know for sure, but it could be the playing time thing. But I, I want to know if there's something deeper going on. Well, none of the kids tell. None of the coaches tell. Yeah. So we'll never know. This might be something we find out years down the road, but when we want the intel, when we want the information right now, we don't get it. And I and I don't think it's it's inappropriate for you want to know. This is one of the kids you like. This is one of the kids you were hoping would stay a few years. I, there's not many four-year Devo guys out there that will stay a program for four straight years, but you're hoping you at least get him another year. You won't even get him another year. Now, I guess technically he could come back from the transfer portal. I don't know if we've had one of those with Arkansas basketball. We've had him with football. I don't think we've had him with basketball. So another exit, four total now for this Arkansas basketball program. Again, uh, Keon Minifield, Joseph, actually five, excuse me. Keon Minifield, Joseph Pinion, Denaje Harris, Debo Davis, and now Layden Blocker. I hope he doesn't go to an SEC school because he's going to be a thorn in your side if he does. Three I, in-state guys. And yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what hurts. Right? Here's, that's what stands out to me. Yeah, here's the and here's the, the rub on that. Not a single now in-state player on the Arkansas roster. Not a single one. Not Pinion, not Devo, and not Layden. And I thought Layden would be a, a big piece of next year's team. And unless something crazy happens, he's not going to be. I don't believe, even in today's climate, even in today's transfer portal, that you can win basketball games at Arkansas with all out-of-state kids and all transfers. I don't think that's going to work. I could be wrong. Must could complete. Must could prove be completely wrong next year. There might not be a single connection to Arkansas on this roster. They could get back to the NCAA tournament, but that's never in the history of this basketball program, been the recipe for success. I don't know if they'd add someone that was an Arkansas kid in the transfer portal that played in mid-major, but to me, that is a glaring issue of this team right now. Speaking of Arkansas, I want to tell you about our friends at Buffington Homes with the cottages at the park. It's the newest community here in Northwest Arkansas, just on the north side of Springdale, really close to X and A. I remember leaving X and A and how close it was to it. So if you like to travel, if you like to fly, you need to check the cottages at the park. Now you're close to everything: Fayetteville, Rogers, Benville, and it has again. It's close to proximity to Tyson, JB Hunt, the University of Arkansas, Walmart's home office, and Arkansas's Children's. Arkansas Children's Northwest. You've got the sh- the front porches, the shady showers, the lush green spaces, and more. Again, check it out to learn more. BuffingtonHomesAR.com slash hog radio. BuffingtonHomesAR.com slash hog radio. Chuck Barrett on the other side. Just say, Alexa, play ESPN Arkansas. ESPN Arkansas from TuneIn. Listening to the morning rush. The best selection of RVs is now even better at Wheels RV in Springdale. Wheels RV has added Brinkley RVs to the already loaded lineup of Grand Design and Forest River products. See the Brinkley Model Z, the latest innovation in luxury fifth wheels. And like always, every new RV comes with a lifetime warranty so you can camp with confidence. So stop in and find out why Wheels has been voted best RV dealer year after year. Wheels RV, five miles west of exit 72 off of I-49 in Springdale. Seek, explore, discover with Wheels RV. This is Bruce Stanton. Stanton, Vice President and General Manager of Pradco Fishing in Fort Smith. Our number one volume lure out of our 20 fishing brands is the Bobby Garland Baby Shad. We make them by the millions in our facility in Fort Smith, and the Baby Shad is without a doubt the number one soft plastic crappie lure in the U.S. Fish it on a light jig head or underneath a float, and you'll find it's as productive as live bait. Available at Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Academy, LureNet.com, and tackle stores all over the place, the Bobby Garland Baby Shad. Tommy Craft here for The Fence Man, the company you can trust when it comes to building your next fence. The Fence Man recently built new gates for my existing fence. The whole process was easy, quick, and most importantly, affordable. Plus, 
18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available with The Fence Man. If you need a new fence, gate, or anything that involves a fence, call The Fence Man. 479-782-3936. That's 782-3936. The Fence Man. He ain't afraid of no work. This is the Morning Rush. The nation. He's going to be talking about Arkansas. Arkansas. Hi, folks. Larry Rath here for Rath Auto Resources and the Meineke Car Care Center, where we have the biggest and best selection of premium pre-owned vehicles we've had in years. Many with low miles and those special features you're looking for, and each one road-ready certified with warranty. Be sure to ask about the weekly specials that can save you up to $4,000. Road-ready certified used cars and savings up to $4,000. Two more reasons all the happiest drivers are rolling with Rath. Rath Auto Resources and the Meineke Car Care Center, just north of Phoenix on Towson. In Fort Smith. Are you ready to indulge in an unforgettable fine dining experience? Then come join us at Uncorked, where every meal is a masterpiece, crafted with the finest ingredients to tantalize your taste buds. And with our extensive selection of cocktails, wine, craft beer, and bourbons, we've got something for everyone. So why not take a break from the ordinary and join us on Phoenix Avenue next to Sodi's? Come savor the moment with us at Uncorked, where every visit is a celebration. Are you an angler having trouble finding all the bait, tackle, and more for your fishing needs? Make a wait, bait and tackle. Now located in Fort Smith next to Wits Marine on North 11th Street is your place. Make a wait, bait and tackle. Also has the largest selection of plastics in the River Valley. Reactor Innovation, Bobby Garland, Sue, Mega Bass, and more. Check out the Dial Rod and Reels. Make a wait, bait and tackle. 803 North 11th Street in Fort Smith. 479-926-9320. Also get your rod and reels repaired. Come see us next to Wits Marine at Make a Wake Bait and Tackle. Are you looking for a change of scenery? Lavorne Lumber is looking to hire a Class A CDL flatbed driver for a regional position. Lavorne Lumber is highly competitive in pay. Lavorne Lumber is a family-owned lumber and trucking company. Home most nights and every single weekend. Guaranteed. Lavorne Lumber has top-of-the-line equipment. If you're interested in the job, stop by Lavorne Lumber at 515 Phoenix Avenue in Fort Smith Monday through Friday from 9 to 4. Tired of constant computer issues at work? And who knows what the real problem is? Is it the router? No, it's the hardware. Wait, they said it was the software. Call Hashtech Managed IT Services. Their multifaceted approach to IT support guarantees that everything is working at optimum performance. And Hashtech prevents the small problems from becoming big issues. Hashtech Managed IT Services in Van Buren. 479-802-4978. That's 479-802-4978. Hashtech Technology Without the Headache. Do you need an attorney that you can actually speak with. You need Hickey and Hole Law Partners. The attorneys at Hickey and Hole understand the importance of client communication and are taking the time to meet you, respond to emails, and return calls. Every case is important and they strive to give each one the time and attention it deserves. Call today 479-434-2414 or visit them online at kevinhickeylaw.com. Hickey and Hole Law Partners. Things are about to get better. The tires on your vehicle go round and round, but when they don't, go to Van Alma Tire. They have tires in their name. That's their specialty. Van Alma Tire is all about tires. They have all the name brands and private labels available for you and in stock. So when it comes to getting tires for your ride, it's worth the drive. And financing is available. Ask for details. Whatever your tire need, check out Van Alma Tires on Highway 64 between Van Buren and Alma. Ready to get you rolling on new tires at Van Alma Tire. It's time to vote for your favorite high school player of the week. ESPN Arkansas and Shamrock Roofing and Construction are recognizing the most outstanding high school student athletes. Visit hitthatline.com each week to vote for your favorite athlete of the week. The high school player of the week is brought to you by Shamrock Roofing and Construction. No one can install a better roof at a better price with a better warranty than Shamrock. Visit them at shamrockroofer.com. Visit the nominees each week at hitthatline.com. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. You're listening to The Morning Rush with Ty Richardson, Tommy Kraft, and Chuck Barrett. Ty, I fill it out once in ink. There's no erasing. There's no going back. There's no changing things up. I play my gut, first instinct, write it down in ink. That's the way I do it. Chuck just said there. Filling out with ink just feels right. And I did it yesterday, Chuck. I don't know if you can read the K-E-N in the championship game, but 
You know, and I, I really don't feel that bad that they lost yesterday. In fact, I kind of I, I felt like I had something to do with their upset loss to Oakland. I've last already night. Uh, I've already wadded my bracket. I'm throwing it in the trash. It's gone. It's already gone. So is mine. There's no evidence. There's no evidence <laughs> my bracket ever existed. <laughs> well, if you have it, sign up for a hitthatline.com bracket challenge. You can still do stuff for the 16 team and the 4 team. Go to hitthatline.com. It's brought to you by our friends at On The Mark Sports Bar and Grill in Fayetteville, 810 Village and Bowling in Fort Smith, and Shelter Insurance Agent Chris Dooley. Again, go sign up, hitthatline.com. Click on the March Madness tab. It's also brought to you by Walk On Sports Bistro, Century Bank of the Ozarks, Cafe Con Cheese Mate, Lynx at Chaffee Crossing, and Foghorn's Wings. Yes, Chuck, again, I don't care, though. Here's my thing. I would much rather see high-octane upsets like we saw Oakland beat Kentucky last night than I would my bracket winning me some, quote-unquote, selective money. I, I Give me the Oakland over Kentucky win over Kentucky winning the national championship and my bracket being accurate. Oh, that was a great moment last night. It was a great moment. You had to feel happy for that coach. I mean, he's been there 40 years. 40 years. You know, and they beat Kentucky. I mean, what uh, you know? What kind of cherry on top is that for uh, uh, for Coach Campy to win a game like that? So, yeah, it was it, it was great theater. I mean, it's what the NCAA tournament's all about. It was epic. It was epic that anyway, we got some high, <laughs> we got some highlights and other stuff to include. But how about that kid Goki, man? He drills, and I I didn't know this until I looked up his his stat line of the season. Chuck of his three hundred and thirty five. Field goal attempts this year, 327 of them have been threes. Yeah. You've this only shot eight, eight, eight two-pointers all year. All year. This is a guy that was at the same college as Isaac Tesla years ago at Hillsdale. And now he's playing in Oakland, the pride and joy of Rochester, Michigan, and they get the biggest win of Campy's career. In addition to that, Campy and Cal are friends. And so you have all these different storylines last night, and it was kind of leading up to it. Now Cal's going to get fired. That's going to happen, in my opinion, at least. I think he's gone, man. That's been one of my takes this morning. I think Cal's gone. It's going to take a lot of money to uh, make that change. I I don't. I don't. I don't think they're. uh, I don't think it's going to happen. I know it's a popular sentiment today, and and nothing would surprise me. But if I was a betting man, I would say he's their coach next season. I don't know as a Kentucky Board of Trustees member or their athletics director, Mitch Barnhart, how you justify keeping him with the supposed level of competition you're supposed to have in Kentucky basketball because they've won one NCAA tournament game since 2019, one SEC tournament game since 2019, one in four in their last five NCAA tournament games, which is the worst since the 70s. I know it's a lot of money, 30 plus million. But if you're Kentucky, surely there's a couple of big time boosters that will pay to go get away. And I guess the question becomes who you would get at that point. I can't see him surviving this this well, game. Well, let's 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 enjoy the game last night before we start firing people. Let's enjoy the fact that Oakland gave us great NCAA tournament theater. Um it was one of the reasons we watched the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, yes, it was a very bad loss for Kentucky. But if you fired every coach that suffered an upset loss in the NCAA tournament, I mean, you'd be firing guys left and right. I know their expectations are higher. I understand that. Um, but, but I mean, we're, we're, we're not even 24 hours removed from it. I, I don't. I don't think today's the day to decide whether or not to fire someone. And frankly, um, the fact that the rest of the country revels in Cal's failure tells you that he's generally in the spotlight. So um, I'd be surprised if it if it happens. But you may be right. Well, Goki was the story last night, and he just kept drilling three after three. Here's Goki again, putting up a three and hitting. Goki, here he is again, putting up a three. Oh, goodness. There's Golke. That's a deep three. It's gone. 12 points already. There he is again. Golke comes off a screen, fakes the three. Now he'll take it. (laughs) We're not a Cinderella. Jack ended up with 32 points, 
10 of 20 from three. Did not attempt a single two-pointer last night and knocked down two of three free throws. And whether it was Reeves, Shepard, Dillingham, Wagner, I mean, they just couldn't guard him last night. Kentucky really, I thought, was out of sorts. I was going back and forth between uh, Kentucky and the and the baseball game. I watched more of the the baseball game until Kentucky got down the stretch. But, um, you know, Jeff Shepard wasn't a factor. And, uh, you know, they need Jeff Shepard to be a factor. I thought their freshmen played like freshmen mm -hmm. in an NCAA tournament game last night, which really surprised me, quite honestly. I, I just never thought – Kentucky was in it at all, and uh, I was um, I was very surprised to see them awed by the moment, but I really thought they were, and you could tell down the stretch that, you know, sometimes you watch a team like Oakland, and you, you watch a game against a team like Kentucky, and you know that in the end, Kentucky's going to come back and win. Mm -hmm. You just know. At the very end, they're going to come back and pull it out. I never felt that way. I never felt like Kentucky was going to come back and pull it out. Um, they just didn't have it last night. And the zone just, I mean, it, it, I mean, it, it bothered them all night long. And I thought that's where Kentucky's inexperience really showed. Um, zones will bother lots of teams, but you get a really young basketball team. I'm not talking about a team full of transfers. Those guys have seen zones before college zones you get a, a freshman laden team and the other team slaps a really effective zone on them it can ruin your night and in Kentucky's case it ruined their season you referenced the freshman DJ Wagner goes over five Shepard's one for five and Dylan Ham is two for nine and Cal got asked to just kind of how his team particularly those guys perform here's what he said following the game we had some guys that didn't play the way they'd been playing all year we did everything we could. We, we knew the zone would be tough, but we miss shots. We don't miss the preparation. I thought they were in a great trying to keep them loose. But when the game started, we had some guys not play to the level they could play. I thought Kentucky was aiming last night when they shot, particularly Jeff Shepard. Um, I thought or Reed Shepard, who uh, Jeff's yeah. his dad, I guess, Reed Shepard. <laughs> um, I thought Reed Shepard particularly when he shot was aiming. I thought they got tight. Uh, and when you get tight, you start aiming. Draw a baseball analogy to a pitcher that aims. Draw a football analogy to a quarterback that aims. Um, I thought that was going on last night with Kentucky. And, again, I, I'm, I, I was shocked because um, I thought they were tight. I thought they were awed by the moment. And I did not expect to see that. Jay Wright said something after the game. JT Hots brings tech this in about Cal's model with the freshman. Now, Reeves and also Edwards are transfer guys, and there's another guy or two that they brought in. But this class was either the first or second best freshman class in the country this past year. I think you had this, eight freshmen and three sophomores, if I'm not mistaken, on this team. Yeah, and Jay Wright said that, that his model has to change. And I don't think Jay Wright's incorrect in this case. When you think about, you referenced, and I remember the, what you said last year in the NCAA tournament about the Elite Eight squads, how I think it was 31 of the 32 starters on the Elite Eight teams were upperclassmen. It, it just doesn't work anymore. You, you can't do what he used to do in 2012, getting guys like Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd Gil Gilchrist and others. You can have one or two, but you can't have the the mat not the maximum but the majority of your players as freshmen because when you play a veteran laden team like they did last night in a complicated 131 zone even as good as they are shooting the ball that's going to happen they're going to get bewildered the bright the bright lights are going to be too much it's not just cal it's other teams in college basketball that play in the ncaa tournament too i don't i, I i'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying um i think he'll I think he'll probably change some things moving forward. But isn't it interesting, though, and, and we've talked about this before, that in college basketball, this is the great part about college basketball, and it's the really bad part about college basketball. All that matters is March. Mm -hmm. All that matters is March. You can talk until you're blue in the face about November and December and January and February. All that matters is March. and um, Good or bad, 
You know, you can turn an average season into a great season with a March run. You can have a great regular season. If you crash and burn early, it's a total failure in your people's eyes. And um, it's just proof once again that basketball, for better or worse, college basketball is a one-month sport. You do everything for one month. Mm -hmm. And Cal said he hated the fact that his team's defined by one game. They shouldn't be in our team in the season defined by that game, but it will be. This is the profession we've chosen. Too bad. From the Godfather, you know that. Yeah, too bad. That's you're you're the Kentucky head basketball coach. You you have those expectations. Get over it. Don't cry about it. It's part of being the head basketball coach in Kentucky. Those expectations are upon you once you step foot in the halls of Rupp Arena. Well, you're right, but I'm not going to dance on Kentucky's grave today because we're not there. So I'm not going to dance on their grave today. I hear you. It's fun when Kentucky loses. Um, other games occurred yesterday, and there were some great ones. You want to talk about a team that's fortunate this morning, it's Kansas. You know, there's uh, there's Tennessee that played like a number one seed last night, even though they're seeded number two. The Kentucky game's not the only game that was played last night. And Kentucky's not the only team that's disappointed this morning. Um They are Kentucky. But look, in the grand scheme of things, a number three seed got beat last night. It's not like a 16 beat a one. It's not like the top seed in the tournament got beat. A three seed got beat by a 14. Major upset, no doubt about it. Major upset. But it did not turn the tournament upside down. It's never happened in Kentucky basketball history prior to last night. They were 14 and 0, I think, against three seeds prior to last night. And then Cal and those guys lost. Let's talk to Jimmy and Conway this morning. Jimmy, you got some thoughts on this Kentucky game last night? Top of the morning to you, fellas. Hey, it's always a little bit sweeter when it's a conference rival that gets knocked out, especially Kentucky. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened to them in that game. They they showed up to the arena like they do 90% of the time, thinking, we're Kentucky. We don't have to even do anything to beat this club. And they got punched in the mouth. And they, they didn't know how to react. And Calipari's team is not defined by one game yesterday. It's defined by the previous seasons. All the way back to when he lost in the NIT to Farley Dickinson. He is constantly... Now, hear me out, guys. Now, all the talent that has been through there. You think about all the NBA players that he has got to come to Kentucky. He has really underperformed. He has had so much talent, and he has it. He has one title, which is amazing. That's great, but for Kentucky, that's not that good. That's all the talent that's been through there. I'm just that's an opinion. I have family in Kentucky, and they refuse to cheer for the Cats until he is gone. They have wanted him for years. It, it's not going to be good for Calipari. He's going to get rich, no doubt, but it's going to be like a Jimbo Fisher deal. You're gone because you didn't get the job done. So, thanks, guys. Appreciate the call, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy's call earlier this week, Chuck, kind of coming to fruition. He was rooting against SEC teams. They went, oh, I guess one in one in three yesterday. South Carolina lost, Mississippi State lost, Kentucky lost. You mentioned Tennessee blowing out St. Peter's. You only had one team that actually played like a team from the, what we oh, it's a bad day for yeah, the league. It's terrible. Now let's let's not sound like losers because our team's not there. We're going to enjoy the fact that other teams got beat. Let's not do that. Um, you know, I'm not crushed by the fact Kentucky got beat, but 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 that's what teams that and programs that aren't any good do. They revel in other teams' failures. I think it's and, just Kentucky uh, as a whole, though. I know, but there were other games last night. That was that was not the only game on. I mean. There was a baseball game last night. There was a lot of stuff that went on last night. And, and um, you know, Kentucky will decide what they want to do with Cal. We got our own problems. I mean, we got our own problems. But, hey, if you're buying or selling a home, uh, Weikert Realtors, the Griffin Company, is the name that I remember, and it's certainly the name that I would recommend. I guess recommends the name I was looking or the word I was looking for there. 
Hey, um, you know, I can tell you about my experience, and that would be the thing that I could I could tell you about the best is, you know, my first time buying a home. Um, I had no idea what was going on. Second time, I had a little bit better idea. Uh, they knew every step that I needed to take, and they knew every step and every problem and everything that was going to come up uh, during the course of the process. In other words, they guided me through it. That's what I needed. Um, and when you are buying or selling a home, you want someone on your side of the table who understands when you have questions and make certain that they're following what you want it done. That was my experience at Weicker Realtors, the Griffin Company, and I think it'll be your experience too. Now, they've got offices in northwest Arkansas. They're in, uh, they're in Washington County. They're in Benton County. They're in uh, Sebastian County, the Fort Smith area. They're in Branson now as well, and you can always log on to WeikerGriffin.com. You reference flicking back and forth between the Kentucky and the Arkansas baseball game. 1-0 to zero, the final against the Auburn Tigers. Pitch and travels, and it did just that last night. Here's Dave Van Horn on three guys, McIntyre, Smith, and also freshman Gabe Gackle. Well, I'm going to state the obvious. We pitched really well. Hagen had got into a couple of jams. One of them was because we didn't make a play in the outfield, and he got out of them. Amazing. Second and third, one out two different times, and uh, he got out of both of them. All three of our pitchers did a tremendous job. You know, the bullpen with McIntyre and Gackle shut them down the last three innings and uh, gave us a chance to win the ball game. He also mentioned Arkansas had chances to put the game away earlier than they did in the bottom of the ninth. Luckily, again, Gackle got his fifth save of the season. But the key, the key stat for me, Chuck, last night – Auburn was 1-15 in with runners on base. Even when they got guys on base, which wasn't a lot last night, Smith, McIntyre, Gackle, they closed down those clutch situations, also got some infield help as well. They were very good. I mean, I thought Arkansas was pitching last night, and it needed to be good. I mean, it had to be good because uh, Auburn's pitching was good. So um, I don't know that it was a question of Arkansas's failure offensively. I just think Auburn pitched well. Their guy, you know, he had a – very good ERA, and he was 3-0 and coming into the game, too. He didn't have as many strikeouts. But I thought Arkansas' staff last night was, was outstanding. And we had wondered how uh, Gackle would do in that situation. Um, I didn't worry about McIntyre or Smith, but, you know, I, I sort of wondered how, uh, you know, that, that freshman would do in that spot. And he did great. So it's a good night. And we might see him – Today, if there's a game, and definitely tomorrow, which it looks like there's rain coming down the pipe uh, later on. It's going to start about 9 a.m. this morning. It's going to go through well into the night. So don't be surprised if they move the game back and do we have two seven-inning games tomorrow. Uh, Gackle, though, again, expected to see they very pleased with his freshman another closed-out game. Oh, yeah, he's not done. He only threw 14 pitches. It was, you know, a stressful situation, but he didn't have runners on base, and it wasn't real – you know, it wasn't tough out there as far as on the on him physically. It's not like he had to throw a lot of pitches. So I would say maybe tomorrow, probably for sure on Saturday. I think we, Chuck, I think we had a pretty good idea of what the starting rotation was going to be. I know Molina didn't have the best fall and spring ball, but he's figured it out in the games thus far. We knew that Smith and Tiger were your one and two, and we knew Mac was going to be your your pin guy, your first pin guy, and, and maybe the course a couple of games, but. Even as a true freshman, the, the Cali kid, Gabe Gackle, seems like he's he's not going to wilt under pressure. And I, I know we got a lot of games to go, but thus far, he's he's when he's been called upon, he's delivered. Yeah, that's kind of what I was saying a minute ago. I, I didn't know exactly how he'd do in this situation. But, I mean, he, uh, he, he was doing great. And they gave him the ball, and he, he saved the game for him. So what about... Dave Van Horn and what's going on with him in this weekend. And I'm not talking about baseball-wise. Apparently his, uh, his daughter's giving birth at potentially some point this weekend. He got asked about, hey, what's the change? The itinerary might mix up. Is Hobbs going to take over? Here's what Dave said about just kind of his family situation right now. The school flew me out today because it sounded like it, she wasn't going to have him. But they're going to have a meeting tomorrow. A couple more of her doctors who've been out, been out of town, are, are they're going to meet and now uh, – things are staying the same then they're going to try to get her through a few more days because every day you know the percentage goes up as far as just everything's better she'll be at uh, 29 weeks exactly tomorrow so you know but if they decide to go in and get the babies then 
I don't know if I'll be there. Uh, you know, my daughter Holland really wanted me to go. She kept saying, you need to go, even if they, you know, have the babies that, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to see them anyway. And no one's going to really see them. She didn't know she'd see them. They'd just be in NICU for a while. So really, uh, it's there's not a plan in place at the moment, but we'll just see what happens and go from there. I think sometimes we forget that these guys aren't robots. They're not just coaching 24-7 all the time that they have families, they have lives of their own. And I know for all the, the grandparents out there listening, that's a, a memento. It's a crazy experience in your life. And it sounds like Dave Van Horn's going to experience it pretty soon, Chuck. Well, it does. Um, or they're, you know, or, or he won't be able to experience it with them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know exactly how all that'll work. Um, it sounds like, but you know, more than anything, it's a, you know, it's a, as you said, it's a, it's a momentous time in their lives, and um, hopefully everything goes well. I don't know if I read this or if this was texted to me, and I, the accuracy of this may be incorrect, but he might, they might be having triplets. I, I need to I go. I believe that's right. Is that right? Okay. That is right. I I thought I had read that in, in Whole Hawk Sports, but that's pretty, uh, pretty crazy if that is indeed the case. Hey, we're brought to you this morning by our friends at Wheels RV in Northwest Arkansas. They're excited to announce the addition of Brinkley RVs to an already loaded lineup of Grand Design and Forest River products. Come check out the all-new Brinkley Model Z, the latest innovation in luxury fifth wheels. It comes with a lifetime warranty, so you can camp and not just camp with being scared or worried about what's going on. You can camp with confidence. Come on in and see why Wheels RV is the best RV dealer year after year. Five miles west off exit 72 in Springdale. Seek, explore, and discover with Wheels RV. Now, plenty of good games on yesterday. I was trying to flip between, or I had the Kentucky and Oakland game on, had the Arkansas and Auburn game on. But Chuck, if you look at yesterday, uh, and I say plenty of good games, the average margin of victory was 15 points. There was about four good games yesterday that that stood out. I was a little bit underwhelmed with day one of the NCAA tournament, to be quite honest. Yeah, there were a lot of one-sided games. There were. Uh, there were a few that went down to the wire. If you, you know, last night, for those who stayed up late, um, the kansas Samford game was uh, really Ooh. a great game. And um, Kansas is so lucky. To still be alive and kicking today. I mean, so lucky. But uh, there were a few close games here and there. But uh, for the most part, there were a lot of one-sided affairs. You're right. That was my upset pick. And Bucky Ball got hosed. That was about as clean a block as I've ever seen in college basketball. And, of course, the name on the front of the jersey, you can't tell me that refs don't look at that in the midst of a tight game because Kansas got the beneficiary of another call in an NCAA tournament game. Ticks me off. All right, we've got a lot to get to in the next two hours of the Morning Rush. More thoughts on baseball, basketball, and your thoughts as well on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. Hey, we're brought to you this morning by our friends at Pradco Fishing. They make the Umbrella Flash Mob Jr., the Smithwick Original Suspending Rattling Rogue, the Bobby Garland Baby Shad, and the Yum Dinger. You can find all those and more at Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Academy, Learnat.com, and Tackle Stores all over the place. It's Pradco fishing products made right here in Arkansas. Hour two on the way. Hello there, homeowner. Roger Scott for Leaf Guard Gutters of Arkansas. Are you tired of dealing with clogged gutters, climbing ladders, and worrying about potential damage to your home? Well, listen up to me now. Leaf Guard of Arkansas has got you covered. This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas, more than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel hotline at 877-377-6963. McClarty Daniel, a vehicle for every lifestyle. When you're looking for a new car, you want to shop for a vehicle you love with an organization you trust. You've probably heard that McCarty Daniel means making deals, but what I'm inspired by the most is that McCarty Daniel means making a difference in our community. When you buy a vehicle with McCarty Daniel, you reinvest right here in the community, in our schools, in our little leagues, in our food banks, and our people. 
So you're not just making a purchase, you're making a difference too. Come see us at any of our six locations in Northwest Arkansas. Tommy Craft here. When it came time for new gates and some fence repairs at my home, the fence man was my first call. The fence man does it all, from large commercial jobs to small residential repairs. Wood privacy fence, vinyl fence, commercial or residential chain link, even custom wrought iron fencing. 479-782-3936. 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available. If it involves fencing, the fence man does it. The fence man. He ain't afraid of no work. 479-782-3936. It's a dandy white perch. Big old slab. C'est bon, Sakhalin. One beautiful crappie. It's a paper mouth. <laughs> Some serious crappie. Nice spec. We got crappie. They might go by different names, but all prefer the same thing. Bobby Garland, America's favorite white perch, slab, Sakhalin, paper mouth, crappie, spec, crappie baits. I call it dinner. The tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up to the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile device and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. Are you looking for the best Razorbacks insight and analysis? Hell yeah. How about listening to an Arkansas football legend? Matt Jones. All he does is make big plays. What's the voice of the Hogs have to say? Hey, what a great crowd last night. Don't forget about the Omahogs. The Hogs are going to Omaha. Matt Jones, Chuck Barrett, and Phil Elson. The best in the business. On the Hit That Line podcast network. Go to hitthatline.com or search Hit That Line wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Are you in need of a good power washing? Mike Jenner's Mo Wash is a full-service press washing corporation with over 15 years of experience in the River Valley in Northwest Arkansas. Cleaning services include exterior home, fence, driveways, walkways, gutters, pool deck cleansing, and more. We remove dirt, grime, and more to give you that sparkle you desire. Call me at 479-763-5561. We're open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mike Jenner's Mo Wash, one call, cleans it all. Madonna has gone from like a virgin to like a surgeon. You can try to nip and tuck from the curse of sin, but eventually death is going to win. God will do major surgery on this sin-filled world, and when He does, people will try and hide their faces from Him. Even plastic Christians won't be exempt. Look up Isaiah chapter 2 and see how the spiritual world renders this an immaterial world. I'm Pastor Abe from Woodland. Read about it. This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas, more than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel Hotline at 877-377-6963. McClarty Daniel, a vehicle for every lifestyle. When you're looking for a new car, you want to shop for a vehicle you love with an organization you trust. You've probably heard that McClarty Daniel means making deals, but what I'm inspired by the most is that McClarty Daniel means making a difference in our community. When you buy a vehicle with McClarty Daniel, you reinvest right here in the community, in our schools, in our little leagues, and our food banks, and our people. So you're not just making a purchase, you're making a difference too. Come see us at any of our six locations in Northwest Arkansas. Tommy Craft here. When it came time for new gates and some fence repairs at my home, the fence man was my first call. The fence man does it all, from large commercial jobs to small residential repairs. Wood privacy fence, vinyl fence, commercial or residential chain link, even custom wrought iron fencing. 479-782-3936. 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available. If it involves fencing, the fence man does it. The fence man. He ain't afraid of no work. 479-782-3936. It's a dandy white perch. Big old slab. 
C'est bon, Sakale. One beautiful crappie. It's a paper mouth. <laughs> Some serious crappie. Nice spec. We got crappie. They might go by different names, but all prefer the same thing. Bobby Garland, America's favorite. White fur, slab, sockele, paper mouth, crappy, spec, crappy baits. I call it dinner. The tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up to the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile device and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. Are you looking for the best Razorbacks insight and analysis? Hell yes. How about listening to an Arkansas football legend? Matt Jones. All he does is make big plays. What's the voice of the Hogs have to say? Hey, what a great crowd last night. Don't forget about the Omahogs. The Hogs. Two outcomes you appreciated last night. One in Auburn, Alabama. One against Kentucky and Oakland as the Wildcats fall to Oakland and the Razorbacks get a 1-0 victory over the Auburn Tigers. We got plenty more to discuss. Layden Blocker has entered the transfer portal. Other good games in college basketball and where your bracket is right now. All that's coming up in our number two. I want to tell you about our friends at Slotchkeys. And whether you have been before or you're a first-timer, it's always a good time at Slotchkeys. Best, the Fresh Break Bread will pull you in right away, and they make sure that your sandwiches are meatier and the best that you've ever had. So if you don't have them on your phone, download the app right now and take advantage of the delicious deals. They have the pizza. They have the sandwiches, the salads, the flats. Everything that you want for your lunch is at Schlotzky's. Located in Hot Springs, Fort Smith, Mountain Home, Fayetteville, Rogers, Springdale, and Siloam Springs. So that is the sound of my bracket, Chuck, as most people do not have a perfect bracket. Listen to this stat, Chuck. Point I know. Zero, 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 three, eight percent are the only people after 16 games yesterday that have a perfect bracket. It's incredible. There were the, the, the two games that busted everybody's bracket were Duquesne beating BYU and Oakland beating Kentucky. Those were the two games that really busted everyone. Away. It's, when, it's when I threw mine away. And uh, <laughs> I think that uh, I was reading where I think on ESPN's um, 75% of the people um, had BYU winning that game. And I think on CBS's, um, oh, 99% had Kentucky winning. I think CBS on their perfect bracket, they've got zero zero or point zero nine one. I saw was uh, what was what was left. And it was, uh, I mean, it's really remarkable how those two games just Blew everybody's brackets up. Yeah, for Duquesne, uh, I've got a friend that played for the Dukes last year, the year before, and I know he was really excited to to watch them move on. Uh, the, the 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 national connection, Keith Dambrot, who's their head coach, used to coach LeBron James in high school. One of his former players, Drew Joyce, is also an assistant on that staff, and he's going to retire after this season. But for now, he's just going to keep on coaching a little bit. They just don't want me to retire, I guess. I'm trying to get to the promised land, and they're making me keep coaxing. But, I, hey, our guys played exactly what they had to do in order to win the game. Just keep on coaching. They win their conference tournament. They were, a, I think, a six seed in their conference tournament, Chuck, and ended up winning the whole thing. And now this guy's going to coach a little, a little bit longer. Hey, there's some value to uh, getting hot at the right time. Look at Oregon. Look at the way Oregon dismantled South Carolina yesterday. That was never a game. That's an 11 seed that won their conference tournament, and they're hot. And you want to talk about a storyline, you know, we remember Dana Altman for what happened here, but, you know, he left Creighton, went back to Creighton, then left Creighton, went to Oregon, and now Oregon's going to play Creighton. Mm -hmm. So, and then you've got Rick Barnes, uh, who's going to coach against Texas now. So, you know, they've got storylines out there. You think they don't know what they're doing? 
<laughs> putting Oregon against South Carolina with Jermaine uh, uh, Chonard, or however you pronounce his name, I forget. Played at South Carolina, goes to Oregon now, hangs 40 on him. You think that committee doesn't – I mean, we, 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 we look at the final matchups, but these guys look at everything. They look at these second-round games. They look at matchups. They look at storylines. And we saw storylines play out yesterday. Yesterday um, was a pretty good day for the committee. Um, really bad day for Greg Sankey. But uh, mm-hmm. a really good day for the uh, – and I like Greg Sankey a lot, just for the record. But this idea that you need to kick the little guys out and put more big guys in, man, that argument took a hit yeah. last night. And the SEC went one and three. Also, Campy and um, Cal Perry. Campy's the head coach of Oakland, and Cal are apparently good friends. So, yeah, that, I think that's a big thing. I you, mean, they know what they're doing. Yes, A&M's playing Nebraska. A&M just took Nebraska's AD. So yeah. we got that. There, there's plenty, and there's probably other ones that we have not mentioned. Uh, and they must have two or three people on that committee. All right, you're in charge of storylines. <laughs> you know, you know, Bob and Bill, you figure out who the best teams are. You know, Mike and Mark, you find us some storylines, and that's really, you know, that's a simplified way of putting it. But they kind of, you know, they they put all this stuff in a pot, and they come out with this bracket, and I think we're seeing some of the method to their madness. I've got a storyline for you, and you might have seen it. You may not have. Did you see what Long Beach State's athletics director yes. said about their coach? Okay, so for those that don't know, uh, Dan Munson, who is no longer the Long Beach State coach, uh, he was going to be let go after this season. They had a change in their athletics department, new AD, and he told them at the end of the season, hey, we're not going to retain you after this year. We're looking for a change in leadership. That's all, like that, that's that's normal, right? But listen to what this guy was caught saying. My belief and hope is that by doing what I did, aka firing him, and the timing of it, that they would play inspired, and that's what they did. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but it worked. Now, Long Beach State, again, won their initial first four game, but lost a, or actually, sorry, they, they ended up getting the tournament. They won their conference tournament, and then lost to Arizona. Good game in the first half. Zona just took over in the second half, but... What an egregious thing to say. That's just about as well, distasteful as it gets. Anytime someone says, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, they're trying to pat themselves yeah. on the back. Just like when someone says it's not about the money, it's, it's about, about the money. money. <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of how it works. I, uh, I I read that yesterday, and I thought it was I thought it was one of them Onion articles, Chuck, or one of the articles that from a, another website that was misconstrued or taken out of context. But no, that was the case. That was actually said in regards to the head coach, Dan Munchen, no longer there at Arkansas, or excuse me, at Long Beach State. There's some other good games on yesterday, including Dayton, 17 points down in the second half to Nevada. They came storming back. Last year had to pick up his dribble. Five to shoot. Davidson, let's fly. The mark. Rebound Coleman. Back. Last year, it's not his game. Let's go. And the Dayton Flyers pull off the second half comeback. Wow, it looked like it was definitely going to be Wolfpack basketball. And that just says it right there. That fan clapping his hands as if to say we had him and we let him off the hook. We let him off the hook. Brad Nessler, one of the best in recent memory. Calling NCAA tournament games. Love hearing him. Love all these other brother broadcasters that are doing a good job through one game of action or one day of action and we got another round starting today at 11:15. Well, you look at that game. I mean, they closed on a 24 to 4 run. I mean, Nevada had that one put away pretty much. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, 24 to 4 is quite a run to end the ball game, but it shows and we saw this last night in the Kentucky game. Um when things start to snowball, man, the collars get tight and uh, pressure begins to mount, and every possession matters. And you can just feel the tightness, sometimes through the television, when a team has the ball. And um, I thought you know, the, the part of the Nevada game that I saw, you could just see that team falling apart. And there was nothing they could do to stop the snowball. There was nothing they could do. And with every possession, the pressure magnified. And by the end of it, they were toast. Kentucky, those freshmen, 
I, you said it earlier, I never in my wildest dreams thought that they would play as bad as they did last night. Uh, Reed Shepard, Dillingham, and Wagner were just nowhere near themselves. I don't think Shepard hit a field goal in the sec- until the second half. It was inexplicable from the team that I watched all season. And, uh, again, I know they didn't have a great out against a and but that was defensively, not offensively. That zone just really confused them last night. Well, you know, it was interesting. I don't know that it was an incredible amount of confusion going on. I saw Kentucky get shots, and they didn't hit them. And with every shot they missed, they got a little tighter. And Mm -hmm. then they started aiming, as I said a little bit earlier. I I just thought uh, sometimes when open shots aren't falling and you're the favored team and everyone expects you to win and you're not winning big – you start aiming, man. I, I mean, you just do. You see it all the time. And I thought Kentucky did that last night. I, I think that's what a good zone does. Um, you know, if, if, if you attack a zone the right way, you're going to get shots. But it doesn't mean you're going to make them. And if you don't make them, with every time down the floor, the pressure mounts. And I just saw that last night watching Kentucky down the stretch. I just thought the only guy that seemed comfortable in the moment to me was Antonio Reeves. Mm-hmm. Everybody else seemed awed by the moment. He was like 11 of 19 or something. Ended up having a really productive night, especially shooting the basketball. Veteran in the player, mm-hmm. veteran player. He's played against zone before. He's, uh, you know, look. It, it's 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 not like these guys hadn't played zone. I mean, you know, zone's not something new, but you put eight freshmen and three sophomores on a team and against a veteran team that slaps a good zone on you, and then your shots don't fall. The shots you get don't fall. Um, man, that's a recipe for disaster, and, and and that's what happened to him. I'll tell you last thing on this. Kentucky's Achilles heel this, Achilles heel this season, outside of their defense, their front court was soft. That's the softest front court that Cal has had since he's been in Lexington. They were tall. They They're were not lanky. Skilled. They're yeah, not, skilled. not skilled. And they, they don't have any basketball IQ outside of maybe Edwards. That was it. I mean, Avisage, young guy. I didn't think – I know Bradshaw had a good game against us a couple weeks ago, but for the most part – that was the worst front court. Agenso's really raw. He's going to be a great player. He's really raw. Um, he's the one that I think really lacks the skill in in inside that that that, that you would expect to see. I, I just I, I'm shocked by what happened to Kentucky. I really am. Yep. All right, we still have plenty to get to coming up. Your morning rush daily question. Scott Tabor, uh, courtesy of Alumni Hall, is going to join us momentarily. But for now. I want to tell you about our friends at APAC Arcola that have immediate job openings in the Boone, Marion, and Baxter County areas. So if you're a licensed CDL driver, heavy equipment operator, concrete finisher, diesel mechanic, or you have paving or concrete labor experience, apply today at jobs.crh.com. APAC Arcola offers top pay, a sign-on bonus, benefits including insurance, retirement, and profit sharing. Apply online jobs.crh.com. Again, that's jobs.crh.com. APAC Arcola is an equal opportunity employer. Still rolling along here on a Fast Break Friday. Find us on 99.5 and 1290 in Northwest Arkansas, 95.3 in Fort Smith in the River Valley, 96.3 in Hot Springs in Central Arkansas, 104.3 in Harrison and Mountain Home, 97.1 in Camden in South Arkansas, and everywhere on hitthatline.com. This is Bruce Stanton, Vice President and General Manager of Pradco Fishing in Fort Smith. If you're going to do some cold water bass fishing, you need to be using an Umbrella Flash Mob Jr. It's the best lure for duplicating a small school of shad and can be worked from the top of the water column to the bottom. Whether you're trying to win a bass tournament or whoop up on a bunch of white bass and stripers, the Umbrella Flash Mob Jr. will catch them. Available at Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Academy, LureNet.com, and tackle stores all over the place, the Umbrella Flash Mob Jr. Come make craft for the fence man. If you've always wanted powered automatic gates at your home or business, but you didn't know who to call, let me tell you about the fence man. 479-782-3936. The fence man does it all. Custom wrought iron installations, automatic gates, even controlled access systems, and lots more. Ask about 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit. For your custom fence and gate needs, call the fence man. 479-782-3936. The fence man. He ain't afraid of no work. This is the morning rush. Hudson Clark with his fifth career interception. Drive a third row SUV that is style in motion with the 2023 Buick Enclave. 
at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Right now, get $1,250 in total savings or 2.9% financing on a 23 Buick Enclave. The 23 Buick Enclave, designed for the road ahead and well-crafted for your refined taste. Test drive a new Buick Enclave and experience the new Buick at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Exit 11 off of I-540 in Fort Smith. Patriot Transport wants to thank their drivers for their hard work and dedication. The local and over-the-road drivers are essential to the Patriot Transport mission. Day in and day out, Patriot Transport drivers are on the road striving for safety and success. To the -the behind-the-scenes dispatch and office employees, Patriot Transport thanks them as well for the hard work they put in day and night. If you want to be a part of the Patriot Transport family, visit PatriotTransport.com. Patriot Transport is located in Danville, Arkansas. When you're clocking out and happy hour's already started. But... You're clocking out and happy hour's already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Dozy Place has now been serving award-winning steaks for over 20 years. Celebrate your special birthday, holiday, person, or just because at Dozy Place. Start with delicious appetizers and your choice of drinks from the largest selection of wines, beer, and liquor in the River Valley. Dozy Place is open Tuesday through Thursday, 5 till 9, and Friday and Saturday, 5 till 10. Reservations are recommended, so call 784-9111. 784-9111 for Dozy Place, 422 North 3rd Street, Fort Smith. It's 2024. Let's go see what's new at the Golf Nut. Callaway Paradigm AI Smokewoods and Irons. The world's first AI smart face designed using real player data. Cobra Dark Speed Woods and Irons. The fastest driver Cobra has ever built. Start the new year off with a lesson and feel more confident on the course. Contact Matt Brooks at 646-4430. The Golf Nut, 5121 Towson Avenue in Fort Smith. Your number one golf shop since 1994. If you knew all the Jody's Auto Service Centers can do for your vehicle and you, you'd never take your vehicle anywhere else. My fleet is small, 14 trucks and cars. It's a struggle every day with parts, employees, and scheduling. But one thing I never worry about is vehicles. Jody's has special fleet pricing, special in and out service, or free shuttle and pickup and delivery service. And they do everything, service, repair, and maintenance. That makes my life much easier. All my vehicles go to Jody's. Latest technology and highly trained technicians means we can do it all. From the most highly technical repairs to everyday oil change specials, tires, everything, even diesels. Jody'sAuto.com schedule free shuttle service or pickup and delivery. Get a tire quote, get financing. Jody's Auto Service Centers voted best of the best by our customers year after year. We're your neighbors since 1984 with three full service locations in Fort Smith and Van Buren. See for yourself at JodysAuto.com. Will your bracket be better than Matt Jones, Derek Ruskin, and the rest of the ESPN Arkansas team? Then prove it. Sign up for the HitThatLine.com Bracket Challenge presented by On The Mark Sports Bar and Grill in Fayetteville, 810 Billiards and Bowling in Fort Smith, and Shelter Insurance Agent Chris Dooley. Registration is easy. Just find the contest on HitThatLine.com. The HitThatLine.com Bracket Challenge is also brought to you in part by Walk On Sports Bistro, Century Bank of the Ozarks, Cafe Con Chisme, Links at Chaffee Crossing, and Foghorn's Wings. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. It's time for the Red River Dodge Morning Rush Daily Question. Red River Dodge in Heber Springs, Arkansas's number one Ram dealer. Log on at RedRiverDodge.com. Your Honor, I'd like to ask for a recess. I'd like an answer to the question, Judge. The court will wait for an answer. That's a Morning Rush Daily Question. It's pretty simple. What game yesterday wrecked your bracket? Or maybe what game today do you just anticipate it's going to wreck? It's easy for me. I, I, I'll I say, that not that the Oakland and Kentucky game it, it wasn't important because Kentucky is my national champion, but I'm kind of happy they lost, <laughs> even though that I pre- predicted. Even, even though your bracket Listen, like mine just totally. Hey, it's not just you. Mine's ruined. Right. I'm hedging my bets, Chuck. Cal, I said Cal was going to get fired a couple weeks ago, and then I picked him to win the national championship. You think he's, gonna, you think he's gone? I think I, legitimately, like no BS. This is not a radio shtick. It's, it's over. It's it's, it's done. Over. It's done. One in four since 2019 in the NCAA tournament. He's I go- think he's going to continue to be their coach, but I do think some things are going to have to change. 
do you think his buyout is restructured? Maybe. You think that? Do you think? That, I don't know. I, I I don't I don't I don't know enough about their situation to say what's 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 going to happen in terms of that. I just think when the dust settles, I think he'll still be their coach. Well, I, it's it's an easy answer for all of you to say Kentucky and Oakland was the game that wrecked your bracket. But here's the one that wrecked mine. It was the Sanford and Kansas game last night that I called that bet. I said. The buckyball, Sanford, the Bulldogs are going to pull it out, and they got hosed at the end of that game. Kansas gets the ball in. Ahead to Timberlake on the run. It's a block. And he missed his shot. Did they call a foul? He went for the jam. Should have gone for the layup. Hit the deck hard. I got to see the replay. That was clean. I don't know if there was a foul right there. Thank you, Brendan Haywood. Of course it was clean, but... What happened last night? You had one team that's won multiple national championships that always gets the benefit of a doubt when it comes to playing a mid-major team or a controversial call at the tail end. And there's no way to review it. There's no challenge in college basketball. Chuck, that was, again, Kentucky had them win the championship, but that was the game that I was legitimately mad at that wrecked my bracket because I had them going to the Sweet 16 too. Yeah, that was a bad uh that was a bad moment right there because that was a that was a clean block and um that was that was a bad call. <laughs> and you know, when they say one call can't determine the we outcome about- of the game, well by itself, no, but in the right time or in the right moment it's got a lot to do with it. And that call had a lot to do with the outcome. And you know, we we um um I know officials come up a lot and People have a lot of things to say about refs, and I've always maintained their pros, and uh, I respect the job that they do. But the official that made that call um, choked in the moment. And while he may be a great guy, great father, great husband, great great everything, he's not equipped to handle that moment. And for that reason, that official should not call a game of that magnitude again. Doesn't mean he's not a great ref. Doesn't mean 99 out of 100 calls aren't great. But when you miss a call like that in that moment, it means you as an official did not meet the moment. I'm sorry. Um, I give guys benefit of the doubt in that regard because I do think they're professionals, and I very much respect the job they do. But that official did not meet the moment, and it cost Samford in a major way. And in your case, Ty, it wrecked your bracket. Wrecked my bracket. That was one of the unintended consequences, (laughs) that your bracket got ruined. But it was an awful call in a critical moment. Yeah, and I I listened to Chuck and and Clark Kellogg, and I think Kenny, was the Jet Smith, was talking about this. Take a listen to this, see if you agree or not. The thing that bothers me about the play is we review everything. Oh, we we sat here and watched them review <laughs> like seven calls. Yeah, but they couldn't review that one. Oh, no, uh, you can't review the, something. No, that, I'm saying yeah, that's the right. rule. But that's you, right. But that's you right. have like seven other things that we're all here going to say that were that were irrelevant. They were irrelevant. They were irrelevant. Relevant play of the game. You can't review it. Well, you can't you can't retroactively change the rules because of a situation that happens tonight. Well, I, I, oh, that but, means the rules but, are just wrong then. Yeah. Well, well, that's but, one but opinion. That, that should that's be, one opinion. That, that, I think anything you want to review. Well, one, we complain about how long it takes to review. Now we want to add another review well, of the play. I, I do, so you can't they, talk out of both sides of your well, mouth. Well, and I agree with Clark Kellogg there. And we do complain on both sides of our mouth. But we do, it, but the system now, for better or worse, makes the officials much more part of the game than they were before. Yes. Look, I'm down there on the floor. I see those guys. When they go to that video monitor, for some of them, for some of them, it's part of it. For others, it's showtime. I mean, it is showtime. And they know they're on camera. And I think they get a little carried away sometimes with themselves uh, because the players are right. The players who've played are right. It's calls like that that actually determine the outcome of the game. Not should we add .3 seconds? Should we, you know, should we look at the replay for two more minutes to get .3 seconds exactly right? Should we look at the replay for six or seven minutes, um, you know, to make sure this particular call with 14:36 left in the first half is exactly right? But you get down to the end of the game and you have a call like that, and it's like, that's what decided the game, yep. not the call you spent five minutes on halfway through the first half. Couldn't agree more. 
Could not agree more. Again, what game wrecked your bracket yesterday? That is your Morning Rush Daily question presented by Red River Dodge in Heber Springs. Arkansas's number one Ram dealer. Log on at RedRiverDodge.com. Let's talk to former Razorback pitcher Scott Tabor on the Morning Rush. Our conversation with Scott is brought to you by Alumni Hall, your ultimate Razorback shopping experience. Located next to Whole Foods in Fayetteville or shop alumnihall.com. Alumni Hall, where Razorback fans shop. Go crazy at Baumwalker! Go nuts! Well, they weren't in Baumwalker Stadium last night. They were on the road, and the Arkansas baseball team got a 1-0 victory. As we talked to Scott Tabor now, Scott Hagen-Smith, Tied your record last night, man. Career strikeouts at Arkansas now tied for fourth. What was what was that? You like? knew that was coming, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, you know what I did, and it's not really a record tie when you're in fourth place. You're just somewhere uh, in the uh, pecking uh, order. But but I appreciate that. <laughs> what was it like watching that in real time? You know, it, it, I'm going to have to say this, and it's going to kind of hurt my soul. But back when I played in those Southwest Conference, there's a nasty orange team that played just like we are right now. They weren't very good at offense. They were great at defense, and they were fantastic at pitching. And they won a lot of games, you know, one to nothing or two to one or, or three to one. Uh, and so I think we're getting to see some history made. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at stats right now, and I'm just amazed at the numbers this deep into the season, all the zeros up. And the zeros in the loss column is what's fantastic. There's two, you know. Shame on the two pitchers that got the loss. They're going, come on, man, I'm a marked man. So it's uh, it's fun to watch. I mean, and we're expecting excellence. Every pitcher that comes in, McIntyre comes in. We don't go, oh, we're in the bullpen. We're going to get roped. It's just not there. Then Geico Gackle comes in at the end of the game, and uh, my son and I, who's, who pitches down at Henderson State, we're, we're trying to call pitches. And the great thing was we didn't get them all right. You know, what would I throw right here? I'm going, I'm doing this. And he goes, no, I'm doing this. And he throws a 97-mile-an-hour fastball just right by him. So it's fantastic to watch. You know, there was a sequence last night. I want to ask you about this before I let you and Ty go on. He fell behind 3-0. Um, you know, throws a get-me-over fastball. It's 3-1. Then he threw a slider on a fastball count, buckled the guy right. a little bit, and then came back and just blew him away with a right. uh, w- with a fastball. He he um, his 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 demeanor on the mound, whether it's one and two, three and one. Whatever pitch he's got to make for that count, he seems to be able to make. Well, there's a common misconception that the only only pitch that most pitchers can throw for a strike is a fastball, and that's not true. Uh, sometimes when you're having trouble placing your fastball or you're missing high, which is what he was doing in that sequence, you know, he maybe get a little bit tired. I, I was kind of watching him not finish up his pitches and bring his hand through the zone and what have you. Uh, but you throw a changeup or you throw a slider or something to break that rhythm a little bit. And he's got confidence. He's pitched enough. He he knows how to throw a slider for a strike. And uh, and sometimes it doesn't even have to be a strike in that count. It's a hitter's count. And the guy's going, he's going to come in that fastball. He's going to come in that fastball. Oh, it's a slider. And now now he's seen the slider <laughs> at a three and one count. And he's thinking, I have no idea what he's going to throw on three, two. You know, he just lit me up on three and one. What's he going to do now? So anything he gets close is going to be. Uh, there's, you see a little hesitation in the swing when now he's thinking he's going to throw me another slider, and that fastball adds about five miles an hour. So, so that's what you get when you can get your secondary pitches over. Scott Tabor's with us here on the McCarty Daniel Hotline. Scott, it wasn't just Hagen that had a really good performance last night. We saw Will McIntyre once again come up big for this baseball team. Also, Gabe Gackle. I want to ask you about the veteran first. It's such a change of pace when he comes in for Hagen or when he comes in for Brady. How confusing is that for hitters? that have been getting stuff for the first five or six innings, and then it shifts so dramatically to what McIntyre's doing? Well, they're kind of in a dilemma, uh, especially the first guys that come up and face him because they want to see a pitch. They just got through seeing, you know, 95, 96, and the nasty slider and all this other stuff on the left side. So they've got a right hand, and you kind of want to look at one. But the book on McIntyre is you don't let him get deep in the counts. You want to jump on him early. That's why you see a lot of first pitch, you know, first pitch hacks. Uh, he'll throw a lot of uh, cutters and what have you on the first pitch just because that's his book. And so because they know if he gets deep in the count, then his cutter even gets better. He starts getting on top of it a little bit, putting a little more depth on it. Uh, and he, he is a he's a pitcher. He is a true artisan when he gets on the mound. I mean, he just picks them apart. And 
Uh, he's tough to hit, even if the, if he starts the game. He's just tough to hit because the, everything looks the same leaving his hand. And, and I've always thought that that's what a pitcher should do. Everything should leave, leave, look the same when it leaves your hand. It just does something different when it gets to the plate. And that's hard to hit. Scott, um, oh, go so ahead. that's that's what I'm seeing. I'm sorry, go ahead. Just Chuck and I were kicking around earlier in the first hour how impressed we were with Gabe Gackle, who had his fifth save last night. But those have been at home and in neutral site, which Dallas wasn't really a neutral site. What do the freshmen from Cali show you to do in that environment in that tight of a ball game late? This is going to sound strange, but I always loved to play on the road, to pitch on the road, uh, because if you're throwing well, the crowd's quiet. I mean, you're you're almost pitching in dead quiet, and then that's when you hear your best hecklers because there's nobody saying anything. But uh, Gackle, you just kind of block it out. We've talked about it before. You get between the lines. Some people can, some people can't. You hear white noise in the background or anything else. You kind of want a little noise. And uh, he goes on the road, and, and, I mean, it's still 60 feet, 6 inches to home plate, and you still have to do the same thing. I saw him get after he got two outs. He got a little uh, – was falling glove side a little bit to his pitches, and you saw him turn around and look at the mound, which all pitchers do because it's not their fault. It's always the mound's fault. And and he, he was missing, and he wasn't missing close. He was missing bad. And then he kind of gathered himself and came back and just uh, – it was fun to watch. Just, just threw it right by him. And only took 14 pitches. Dave Van Horn said after the game that we'll either see him today or tomorrow. It's probably going to get moved. I, I'm going to guess that the games are going to get moved to tomorrow because of the rain that's going to go on in Auburn right. today. But we will have to see, wait and see on that. We're talking with Scott Tabor this morning, courtesy of our friends at Alumni Hall. Scott, we still haven't seen Hunter Dietz. Dave mentioned him, his name in the, in the press conference last night. About 10 days out from his recovery it sounds like they're they're starting to solidify guys' roles a little bit. I wonder, as a pitcher, what what is that dynamic change when a guy comes off of injury and they're still trying to potentially feature him in different situations in conference play? You know, it's not going to affect the starting lineup. You know, our starting three are going to be our starting three unless one of them gets injured, gets sick, something happens. It'll be nice to have a plug and play guy in there uh, if Deets is everything that he's advertised to be. And so far we don't have any reason to think that he wouldn't be because everybody that they've got on the staff is performing as advertised, which is something you just rarely, rarely see. Uh, I think it'd be great. I know that all the other teams in the conference are going, Oh God, good. They've got another, <laughs> another stud coming back. You know, when are they going to pitch him? But he's a guy that may come in, you know, situational for a while, uh, come in and, and relief, come in after McIntyre or come in uh, just in the eighth inning and then to get to, uh, to get to Gackle. So having another arm, another great arm, and we haven't seen him yet, so we don't really know, uh, but supposedly a great arm. And if he's already talking about him, his bullpens must be looking really good and his, his throwing against live hitters must be looking really good. Scott, last thing before we let you go. You mentioned Texas earlier, doing it on the defensive side. Doing I didn't it. mention Texas. I, <laughs> Just, I did not mention Texas. You may or may not have alluded to them, but that's kind of what this Arkansas team has taken shape thus far this season. They win with one home run last night. Yeah, they had six hits, but they weren't able to bring guys home. Are they going to be able to do that in postseason? Are they going to be able to have outings last night, like last night, and continuously win this way? Yeah, Yes and no. You know, if the pitching holds up like we think it will, the, the thing that you get into is another team scoring on a little Gort hit off the end of the bat where where our pitcher walked a guy and then there's a pass ball and he's on second and then a, a guy hits a flare over the second baseman and it scores him from second and they hadn't gotten the ball out of the infield all day and so that's the kind of thing that you want to battle uh, that you're always battling is that that accidental win you know and we can win it you know and we we had the opportunities last night you just don't get you don't get hits when guys are in scoring position you you're eventually it's going to catch up to you. Uh, and this team's not going to go undefeated. No, nobody will go undefeated. Mm -hmm. But we have as good a chance as anybody's ever had from what I'm looking at our staff. Pitching is as good as it's been under Dave Van Horn. I know that he was asked about Fantastic. Nick Schmidt earlier uh, last night. Uh, Hagen Smith is, is playing like a true Friday night guy, and he once again delivered yeah. for this Arkansas baseball yeah. team. Scott, we appreciate the time this morning, man. We appreciate alumni all having you on, and we'll catch you up next Friday, okay? You bet, brother. Can't wait to see you guys. Yeah. Right, that is, again, Scott Tabor. Big weekend next weekend. LSU coming to town. That is going to be a phenomenal series in Bob Walker Stadium. And our conversation with Scott is brought to you by our friends at Alumni Hall, your ultimate Razorback shopping experience. The best and largest selection of licensed apparel for the home family. They've got brands like Nike, 
Champion, Columbia, Onward Reserve, and Peter Millar, plus Yeti and other accessories and gifts. If you're an Arkansas student, faculty, or military, you receive 10% off in-store with an ID. Plus, you can earn cash back with our Hall Pass rewards, $10 off for every 150 points you earn. Alumni Hall, located next to Whole Foods or shopalumnihall.com. Alumni Hall, where Razorback fans shop. Chuck, you referenced a uh, a particular instance for Hagen last night. He was able to, what is so encouraging to me thus far, it, I mean, he hasn't just, he, he struck out a lot of guys, struck out 12 last night, but when he has gotten into jams, he's gotten out of them this season with the exception of game one. Yeah, he's uh, you know, he's a lot more of a pitcher than perhaps he gets credit for. You know, we uh, we focus on the strikeouts, and, I mean, he's 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 got all the pitches, and he can make you look foolish at times. But there was one point last night where, if I'm not mistaken, he got out of trouble with a ground ball to second base. Sometimes that's how you got to get out of trouble. you got to pitch to contact, rush your defense to make the plays, and they've got a good defense. So he is uh, much more of a pitcher than – perhaps sometimes you associate with a guy that strikes out as many as he does. Um, he's he's really remarkable, and he's 20 years old. You know, that's the thing. Every time I watch him pitch, he's 20 years old. He's not old enough to buy beer. He's really not. It's incredible to me. And when I watch him pitch and I look at his maturity level out there, I tell myself he's 20 years old, and I think about, how immature I was at 20 years old. And it is striking to watch the way he carries himself. I didn't think about it. He can't buy beer. He's 20 <laughs> he years old. Buy. It's amazing. That struck a that struck a chord with me. I, I heard you talking about this yesterday. I'd, I had to break it down in language you'd appreciate, Ty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that uh I think that definitely did. But Hagen Smith, not just the only performer last night. I want to give credit to Will McIntyre and Gabe Gackle. We'll see a Brady Tiger. I tend to think again, I I'm going to let Dave do the talking on this when asked about the weather. I don't think they're going to play today, but here's Dave on this. You know, we're going to look at it tomorrow, and I know there's like an 80% chance of rain most of the day. Auburn coaches were told by whoever they deal with with the weather here that it might be a situation later in the evening, say 6, 7, where we might have a window there, but we'll look at it. I don't, you know, we're not going to start and for stuff rolling around, and obviously if it just keeps raining. Plus, we'll have to look at the condition of the field, so... You know, it looks like it could rain into Saturday, maybe midday. You know, that's our last day to play. So if that's the case, we'd have to play two sevens. And I was thinking about this when I heard him say this last night. I don't know if that helps or hurts which team. I don't know if it's it's beneficial to Arkansas that you get a day's rest and then you take on Auburn two games or if that helps Auburn more. I would think it would probably be the home team, but I don't, I don't, I don't think it matters. It's 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 a wash, you think? No yeah, pun intended. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think it matters. I think every day's the same. The team that's better, the better team, has the advantage. Whether you're playing one game a day, whether you're playing three games a day, whether you're playing five games in two days, however you've got it worked out, mm-hmm. the better team always has the advantage. I don't care if Arkansas wins game two. I don't care if they win game three. Just would be nice to come back from Auburn. Doesn't matter about the winning streak. You just want to come back with the series win. I was looking at the weather for Auburn today. Um, It looks like the heaviest stuff's going to be during the daytime. It's showing right around a 50% chance of rain at 7 o'clock tonight, diminishing as the night goes on. I hope that they do everything they can to get it in, although tomorrow looks really good there, sunny and and low 60s. But um, double hatters don't always give you a great representation of, the teams that to me is more the equalizer than anything it it it, um that's why i say i i don't think it favors either side because double headers are you know double headers can be tough to sweep um so maybe you know maybe it favors the lesser team to an extent but i really don't think so um the better team's generally the one that's going to come out on top we'll keep you updated here on espn arkansas and hit that line.com the voice of Razorback Baseball, Phil Austin, is on our airwaves, so you will be the first to know about the game or no game later on tonight. All right, we've got our hog update coming up. We've got Fence Man Friday picks, and we still need to talk about Eric Musselman, Layden Blocker, and some basketball news that I think is important 
to all of you. Before we do that, I want to tell you about our friends at Gaston's White River Resort. 870-431-5202 is their number. They offer private accommodations in their lodges and cabins. They've got the fully cooked kitchen if you want to cook or you want to go to their delicious restaurant, which I'm a huge fan of, the John Boat Salad Bar that Tommy always talks about. You can do that too. Always have a great time at Gaston's. Fishing, hiking, seeing the nature. I mean, there's so much to do, and you would be shocked at some of the people, some of the big wigs that fly into Gaston's for the best trout fishing in North America. Call Clint, call Jacob, check them out at Gaston's.com. Their Facebook page always has great pics and has great videos. Gaston's White River Resort, a first-class time every time. Arkansas's home for the best sports talk. This is former Razorback tight end Ben Cleveland, and you're listening to The Morning Rush. The best selection of RVs is now even better at Wheels RV in Springdale. Wheels RV has added Brinkley RVs to the already loaded lineup of Grand Design and Forest River products. See the Brinkley Model Z, the latest innovation in luxury fifth wheels. And like always, every new RV comes with a lifetime warranty so you can camp with confidence. So stop in and find out why Wheels has been voted best RV dealer year after year. Wheels RV, five miles west of exit 72 off of I-49 in Springdale. Seek, explore, discover with Wheels RV. This is the Morning Rush. Free Diamond Madness this March at the Diamond Center. During the month of March, Diamond Center is giving away a free live-grown diamond with the purchase of any natural earth-grown diamond, one carat or larger, or with the purchase of any qualifying in-stock setting. All you have to do is pick out the perfect engagement ring and we'll take care of the rest. All backed by our free lifetime warranty. This is a can't-miss opportunity. Don't miss out on free Diamond Madness the entire month of March only at the Diamond Center. Celebrating a legacy of love. Hey, Hog fans, this is Matt. This is Elizabeth. And this is the reigning champion of my own conference, Robert. You do realize that's not a thing. Well, I did receive a plaque commemorating that accomplishment. Yeah, and I was elected the president of Mars. Anyway, Hog fans, it's that time again. It's, it's baseball, baseball season. season. And, Hog fans, the stadium shop has everything you need for Razorback baseball. From t shirts, sweatshirts, man cave stuff, and even a Razorback original, the bases loaded beer hats. Plus, ladies, as well as a restocked women's section, we have the bases loaded beer stein boppers. Yeah, it's kind of like those old time space alien antennas you know yeah well not really so when you're in Fayetteville stop by the store at 989 South Razorback Road next door to Baum Walker Stadium or you can shop us on them WW interweb face gram you get it man dad do you mean the website yeah which is shop on razorback.com that's shop on razorback.com or call us at 479 stadium that's 479-782-3486 as always go, go Hawks Folks, Larry Rath here for Rath Auto Resources and the Meineke Car Care Center, where we have the biggest and best selection of premium pre-owned vehicles we've had in years. Many with low miles and those special features you're looking for, and each one road-ready certified with warranty. Be sure to ask about the weekly specials that can save you up to $4,000. Road-ready certified used cars and savings up to $4,000. Two more reasons all the happiest drivers are rolling with Rath. Rath Auto Resources and the Meineke Car Care Center, just north of Phoenix on Towson, Fort Smith. It's the third annual car show brought to you by McKenzie's Racing Supply. Bring your street rods, hot rods, and race cars from all area racetracks. Everyone is invited for a fun day of cars and music at McKenzie's Racing Supply, 1111 South Fort Street, Van Buren. Saturday, March 23rd from 11 to 1. Trophies will be awarded. Live music from the Jug Hill Annie Band. Sponsored by Scott Grant Performance Carburetors, Elite Plumbing and Drain Cleaning, American Towing, Phipps Chassis, and KR Promotions. Tired of constant computer issues at work? And who knows what the real problem is? Is it the router? No, it's the hardware. Wait, they said it was the software. Call Hashtech Managed IT Services. Their multifaceted approach to IT support guarantees that everything is working at optimum performance. And Hashtech prevents the small problems from becoming big issues. Hashtech Managed IT Services in Van Buren. 479-802-4978. That's 479-802-4978. Hashtech technology without the headache. 
It's time to vote for your favorite high school player of the week. ESPN Arkansas and Shamrock Roofing and Construction are recognizing the most outstanding high school student athletes. Visit hitthatline.com each week to vote for your favorite athlete of the week. The high school player of the week is brought to you by Shamrock Roofing and Construction. No one can install a better roof at a better price with a better warranty than Shamrock. Visit them at shamrockroofer.com. Visit the nominees each week at hitthatline.com. Hey, this is Ty Richardson for Jake Neal and his team at Jerry Neal's Barbecue. Jake's dad, Jerry, started cooking barbecue at Jerry Neal's in 1977, and Jake took over and has been doing the same thing ever since. I got ribs the last time I was there. Woo! Man, they were good. Don't forget about the catfish either. It's cooked to order, so it's hot and fresh every single time. The best catfish in the River Valley. Jerry Neal's Barbecue Catfish and Catering, 1823 Phoenix Avenue in Fort Smith. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. Arkansas football. It's the players running to the A. Hogheads. It's more than 70,000 fans calling. Woo pig suey. Yes, sir. Guys, I've got just one thing I want to say to you. Touchdown, Arkansas. Season. This is your hog update on the morning rush brought to you by Mr. Sparky need a licensed electrician to service your home for one of their local pros call 888-8-SPARKY. All right, let's get into your hog update. Big basketball news from yesterday. Layden Blocker has entered the transfer portal. Former Little Rock Christian Academy Warriors, Sunrise Christian, Arkansas grown has decided that he is venturing elsewhere. This is the fifth guy. That is in the transfer portal within this basketball program. You currently have no in-state kids on this roster right now. We'll see what they in add in the transfer portal. That's a huge problem for me. That's a huge red flag. But this is the latest shoot to drop, Chuck, with this basketball team. Yeah, I uh, I had hoped maybe that we wouldn't see you know just the total uh, flip of the roster. But um, I guess that's a little naive in this era. You know, it, it's it, it's going to happen and. Um, this is the latest move in, in that regard. And, um, yeah, he's in the portal. I, I don't, um, I don't really know what to say beyond that. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's going to look somewhere else. Yep. And we'll see where he ends up. I think he would be uh, one of the guys that is probably going to be pursued by some power six maybe, basketball maybe. teams. Layden, uh, you know, when you're six, two, you have to be able to shoot and he can't. Well, I didn't say he can't. I'm saying that you have to be able to shoot. And when you know, when I saw Blocker play this year, his game frankly reminded me a lot of Devo's mm-hmm. when he was a freshman. But Devo's a couple inches taller, maybe three. So um I just don't know what how that game translates when you're six two at the power five or power six level. Now, it doesn't mean because you're not a good shooter as a freshman, you won't become one later. You know, we've had great players here over the years who were not particularly good shooters early in their careers. The difference now is that, you know, a guy like Darrell Walker, who was not a great shooter when he got here, by the time he left, was. A guy like Sidney Moncrief, who was not a great shooter, became a very serviceable shooter. Uh, as a pro and, and, and a very good offensive player as a pro. So you can develop, but now guys leave. And so you go somewhere else and you start over. And most of the work on your game comes from, you know, you're not being coached by the same guy. You're not coming through the same system. The fundamentals don't have time to take. You know, um, you don't become better overnight. And so when you just go or when a coach leaves or gets just given the way it's done now, um, you don't see shooters develop because now it's all contingent upon how much time are they willing to put in. And sometimes it's not that much. Last thing I'll say on this, you use the word develop. I think, and I want to be clear about this, I think Eric Wilson is a great basketball coach. I think this year was an anomaly and I hope next year they get back on track. But I think one of his cons is he's impatient. He's not willing to develop guys all the time. Devo's the anomaly of the last four or five years. 
It has been more of let's take a polished player in some areas and try to work him. Oh, you you haven't seen necessarily these freshmen that have come in that he's worked. And I realize college basketball has changed from that landscape. But I think that's one of the areas where Eric Mosselman is not efficient enough in college basketball today. An hour ago, you were calling for the firing of John Calipari. Firing. Because he's got too many freshmen. And he depends too much on development. Eight versus. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Whether it's freshmen, whether it's upperclassmen, you got to have the right mix. you got to have good that's players. True. You've got to have chemistry. Now, some of that's on the coach to develop, obviously. And I'm, 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 I'm not dismissing the fact that, that, you know, I've always believed if you're winning, it's because of the coach. If you're losing, a lot of times it's because of the coach, too. And um, so certainly coaches, coaches have, to, have to absorb some blame. But there's not a magic formula. There's not a magic formula. You know, last year, the veteran players at the end were the ones that were left standing. This year, I think I saw a stat the other day. And I may be misquoting on this, but I'm pretty close. With St. John's not getting into the NCAA tournament, the teams that added seven or more players last, you know, from last year to this year, none of them made the big dance. So uh, what's the magic formula? I don't know that we're far enough into the game to really know what the magic formula is. So, you know, when you don't win, and you're playing freshman. Well, you got to learn how to play the game. You got to go get. You got to go to the portal. But when you're losing and you're doing it with portal guys, well, you got to develop. You got to get some fresh. Here's the deal. You got to get better players, man. You got to get better players, and you got to coach them better. Yeah, it's a good combination. I think that's the best way to put it. You look at the first team. You had several freshmen. You had guys like Jalen Tate, Justin Smith, and it was a good. It was a good mix the last three years. Just. Unfortunately, you mixed it up. This was one of those mixes. You mixed it up, and it tasted like crap. Hopefully, this next pot of chili or whatever you're making doesn't taste like crap. All right, that's your Hog Update. It's brought to you by our friends at Mr. Sparky. You don't have to put up with Benny Malarkey. Call 888-8-SPARKY. All right, Sean the Fitzman is working this morning. Tommy's off gallivanting. On vacation. So we're gonna, just you and me? And we'll bring in Big C to just give All it a, right, big a C. little big of spice. It is our Big fifth. C picks for Tommy. Yeah. And he misses every single one of them. Intentionally. Intentionally. You got to go with all the underdogs, Big C. <laughs> I got it. All right. Let's get into our Fitzman Friday. Fence Man Friday Picks. Call the Fence Man for all kinds of fences, controlled access, and custom iron projects. 479-782-3936. The Fence Man. We ain't afraid of no work. I have Auburn beating UConn, but I'm a little scared about their game later on at 315 against Yale. Yale is a 12.5 point underdog in this one. Guys, I'm taking Yale in the points. I do think Auburn ultimately wins this game, Chuck, but I think it's going to be a lot closer closer than than 12 and a half. 12 and a half is a lot of points. For an Ivy League. Come on. I'm going to take Yale in the points, but Auburn wins the game. Okay. Big C. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a safe bet. Big C, what is Tommy doing? He's picking Yale in the points. Okay. We'll go roll we'll roll through these quick. Colorado's a one and a half point favorite against Florida. Micah Hanglon or Hangloden's injured. Uh, I don't think the Gators win this one, Chuck. I think that's too big of a loss. I'm going Colorado to pull the upset and win this money line. They're one and a half Florida, point dogs. Florida wins and covers. What do you think, Christian? Florida wins, but they don't cover. All right, last one. A and M against Nebraska. A and M's another one and a half point dog. Nebraska one and a half point favorite. I'm taking A and M in this one. I got A and M beating Houston in the round of 32, Chuck. Huskers win it. A&M. A&M. All right. That's what we're rolling. That is your Fence Man Friday picks. Again, Sean is out working. He's got to do a bunch of stuff across northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. You can always give him a call at 479-782-3936. The Fence Man can take care of your residential, your commercial, whatever you need. It could be a repair. It could be a brand new fence. It doesn't matter. Call Sean and his team over at the Fence Man. The Fence Man. He ain't afraid of no work because he's working his butt off right now. Hour three coming up. Hey, is there any truth to Muss and SMU? Tommy Craft here.
care. When it came time for new gates and some fence repairs at my home, the fence man was my first call. The fence man does it all, from large commercial jobs to small residential repairs. Wood privacy fence, vinyl fence, commercial or residential chain link, even custom wrought iron fencing. 479-782-3936. 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available. If it involves fencing, the fence man does it. The fence man, he ain't afraid of no work. 479-782-3936. Hello there, homeowner. Roger Scott for Leaf Guard Gunners of Arkansas. Are you tired of... This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned. Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas. More than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel hotline at 877-377-6963. McClarty Daniel, a vehicle for every lifestyle. When you're looking for a new car, you want to shop for a vehicle you love with an organization you trust. You've probably heard that McClarty Daniel means making deals, but what I'm inspired by the most is that McClarty Daniel means making a difference in our community. When you buy a vehicle with McClarty Daniel, you reinvest right here in the community, in our schools, in our little leagues, in our food banks, and our people. So you're not just making a purchase, you're making a difference too. Come see us at any of our six locations in Northwest Arkansas. Tommy Craft here. When it came time for new gates and some fence repairs at my home, the fence man was my first call. The fence man does it all, from large commercial jobs to small residential repairs. Wood privacy fence, vinyl fence, commercial or residential chain link, even custom wrought iron fencing. 479-782-3936. 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available. If it involves fencing, the fence man does it. The fence man, he ain't afraid of no work. 479-782-3936. It's a dandy white perch. Big old slab. C'est bon, Sakali. One beautiful crappie. It's a paper mouth. <laughs> Some serious crappie. Nice speck. We got crappie. They might go by different names, but all prefer the same thing. Bobby Garland, America's favorite. White perch, slab, Sakali, paper mouth, crappie, speck, crappie baits. I call it dinner. The tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up to the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile device and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. Are you looking for the best Razorbacks insight and analysis? Hell yes. How about listening to an Arkansas football legend? Matt Jones. All he does is make big plays. What's the voice of the Hogs have to say? Hey, what a great crowd last night. Don't forget about the Omahogs. The Hogs are going to Omaha. Matt Jones, Chuck Barrett, and Phil Elson, the best in the business on the Hit That Line podcast network. Go to hitthatline.com or search Hit That Line wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Are you in need of a good power washing? Mike Jeans Mo Wash is a full-service pressure washing corporation with over 15 years of experience in the River Valley in Northwest Arkansas. Cleaning services include exterior home, fence, driveways, walkways, gutters, pool deck cleansing, and more. We remove dirt, grime, and more to give you that sparkle you desire. Call me at 479-763-5561. We're open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mike Jeans Mo Wash, one call, cleans it all. Madonna has gone from like a virgin to like a surgeon. You can try to nip and tuck from the curse of sin, but eventually death is going to win. God will do major surgery on this sin-filled world, and when he does, people will try and hide their faces from him. Even plastic Christians won't be exempt. Look up Isaiah chapter 2 and see how the spiritual world renders this an immaterial world. I'm Pastor Abe from Woodland. Read about it. This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned. Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com.
Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas, more than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel Hotline at 877-377-6963. McClarty Daniel, a vehicle for every lifestyle. When you're looking for a new car, you want to shop for a vehicle you love with an organization you trust. You've probably heard that McCarty Daniel means making deals, but what I'm inspired by the most is that McCarty Daniel means making a difference in our community. When you buy a vehicle with McCarty Daniel, you reinvest right here in the community, in our schools, in our little leagues, in our food banks, and our people. So you're not just making a purchase, you're making a difference too. Come see us at any of our six locations in Northwest Arkansas. Tommy Craft here. When it came time for new gates and some fence repairs at my home, the fence man was my first call. The fence man does it all, from large commercial jobs to small residential repairs. Wood privacy fence, vinyl fence, commercial or residential chain link, even custom wrought iron fencing. 479-782-3936. 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available. If it involves fencing, the fence man does it. The fence man. He ain't afraid of no work. 479-782-3936. It's a dandy white perch. Big old slab. C'est bon, Sakhalin. One beautiful crappie. It's a paper mouth. <laughs> Some serious crappie. Nice spec. We got crappie. They might go by different names, but all prefer the same thing. Bobby Garland, America's favorite. White perch, slab, Sakhalin, paper mouth, crappie, spec, crappie baits. I call it dinner. The tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up to the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile device and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. On a fast break in fastball Friday. You heard a basketball and a baseball call during our open. As uh, Kyle Schasberger taking over for Phil Austin this weekend. Phil was in Tulsa yesterday for the WBIT as Arkansas women fell by, I think, 18 to Tulsa in that game. He'll be back, I think, starting on Tuesday for the Little Rock game in, in northwest Arkansas. But the Razorback baseball team won 1-0, to zero, and then the Kentucky Wildcats fell to Oakland, the biggest upset from yesterday. Hopefully we see more of those later on today, and we will discuss that coming up in just a bit. But we did have a text or call on the McCarty Daniel hotline asking about Jeff Borzillo, ESPN.com story about Eric Musselman being a candidate for the SMU job, and if there's any legs to this. We'll dive into that coming up and talk about Layden Blocker entering the portal too. We've got the solar eclipse coming up, and I know there's a lot of people really excited about that, including those in Boone County. Get mooned in Boone. You can celebrate in Harrison with the live block, live block party with live music April 5th and 6th. They're going to have the Explore Harrison Entertainment District open at Nino's Place in 1929 Hotel Seville. Vendors are going to include food, snacks, drinks, activities, merchandise, and more. Plus, there's going to be live music, too, including James White. So come take advantage. Get mooned in Boone. The celebration in Harrison is going to be a lot of fun. Brought to you by our friends at Explore Harrison. This hour of Chuck Barrett on the Morning Rush is presented by McClarty Daniel. McClarty Daniel has a vehicle to fit both your style and budget. With six locations in Springdale and Bentonville, you're never too far from a good deal. Visit McClartyDaniel.com to find your next ride. There's not a lot in Jeff Borzillo's story talking about Eric Mosselman to SMU. He referenced him, Will Wade, who McNeese State did not fare well yesterday. Chuck, both of our upset picks lost. Unfortunately, yeah, I know, man. <laughs> it they was, laid an egg. Yeah, it was not. Who great. cares about Will Wade? That bum. <laughs> yeah, they just made you hate him any more last night that he did come through for you. But Will Wade and then Western Kentucky's Steve Lutz. Now, this is a thought. Five players have left this Arkansas basketball program. Do they know 
Do they know that Eric Musselman could have one foot in, one foot out the door? Or do they just want to go elsewhere? I think the players would maybe be privy to that information. Now, I don't think you're going to get it from Joseph or Layden or Devo or any of the other, Denage or or Keon Minifield, but five guys have left this basketball program. Maybe we get an announcement in the coming days about another guy or two. But that is that is an intriguing part of all this is, is your basketball coach going to be retained? And could one of the reasons be that all these guys are leaving is because your basketball coach might be leaving? Something I've thought about the last 48 hours or so. And then this SMU story pops up, which they don't have a great basketball program. They had a good football po- program back in the day with Dickerson and James and again the, what's that? Gosh, dang it. I, that name just slipped my Pony Express. But that's not a that's not a basketball program that is just illustrious history. But you know what they do have? They got Bush and they got other bigwids in Dallas, Texas that have money out the wazoo. In fact, they are just to join a bigger Power Five conference. They're not getting money from what the ACC for what seven to ten years till they're just relying on donations and 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 bigwigs taking care of it. So there would be nil money. That could be offered in Dallas, Texas, a great metroplex, a lot of businesses down there. So while SMU on paper doesn't look like a great basketball job, in today's climate, it might actually be. Are you tying the two together? I mean, are you are you first off, I think players make their decisions based on themselves. I don't know how else to put it. Um it's hard to find many players right now that you look at and you say, all right, he's a he's making his decisions based on what's best for the team. You know, those those players, frankly, sometimes are few and far between. And I don't think any of them are making their decision on what the coach is going to do. For uh, I don't think that, you know, and and first off, I think I don't think this has transpired just for the record. But I I don't I don't think in this case players, I don't think any of the players who have announced that they are leaving. I don't think it's contingent upon anything that Eric Musselman does. Stays, goes, jumps in the lake, whatever. I, I don't I don't think it has to do with anything. See, I do. I, I think even in to- But why? Why do you think Because that? in today's climate of college sports, as big of a deal as NIL is, there are still relationships between coaches and said players. And if you are under the impression or you know or you actually know that a coach is no longer be at the campus that you're at, you some guys will follow after the fact, or some guys will just get out of there before another coach is inserted in. That I, I still think that there is a relationship beca- between player and coach. It's not as tight as it used to be. I will I will fully admit that, but I still think there is even today in twenty twenty four. I don't I don't I don't I don't disagree with that, Ty. But but in this case, if you put it under the microscope. You know, and, 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 and you look beyond the generalities here. The players that are leaving are leaving because they were not getting to play. If you're operating under the assumption that they are leaving because they think Muss is leaving, that, 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 that doesn't add up. They're leaving because Muss wouldn't let them play as much as they thought they should be playing. That's why they're leaving. Um, if anything, I would think they would be inclined to leave if Muss was staying. Because he's the one that didn't play them as much as they think they ought to be playing. Now, look, we're going into a rabbit hole right here, and 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 I don't want to I don't want to venture too far down into this. I think that these are two or three separate subjects, and I don't know that they're all tied in together. Um, I don't think the players leaving has anything to do with what Musk may or may not do. I, I don't. I don't. I. I just. I just don't think. I think they're independent decisions of that. Bill from Northeast Arkansas saying, "Why would Must still be contacting players if he's leaving?" Well, I'll cite Jimmy Smith, who was coaching and recruiting Arkansas in the morning, and then was TCU's running backs coach in the afternoon. That's just the way of college. It's different sport. when you're the head coach, though, Ty. It's different when you're the head coach. When you're the assistant, you're operating at somebody else's pleasure. When you're the head coach, you're in charge of the program. Um, now, you know, the thing that, you know, you, you, you wonder right now is um, what's this roster going to look like? You know, beyond what does it all mean? I mean, what's this roster going to look like? Um, 
who are they going to bring in here? You know, we're going to have essentially an entirely new basketball team next year. Now, it looks like, based on what we've heard so far, an entirely new is probably an overstatement. Um, But you look at what's there right now, and these are all ifs. I'm just talking from the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. Battle Mark and Brazil come back. There's a core. I've not heard anything from them saying they're leaving. Um, What I've heard are players who were not getting to play as much as they thought they ought to. There's a realization that it wasn't going to happen. My guess would be with the limitations the coaching staff feels are there were candidly addressed. And these kids decided that if they were going to play, they needed to go somewhere else. Now, I don't think that has anything to do with Musk. Now, Musk may decide at some point, probably will. He'll probably decide to coach somewhere else at some point in his life. I don't know if it's now. I don't know if it's 20 years from now. I have no earthly idea in that regard. I don't know that the SMU situation has anything to do with this. I do know that SMU, for whatever reason, decided to fire a coach that they hired to replace a disastrous situation or come into a disastrous situation. He won 10 games his first year. He won 20 games his second year, and they fired him because they are ready to upgrade, because they're moving to the ACC. Now, logic would tell you that they're not going to fire that guy unless they've got a pretty good idea what direction they're going. Um, Now, whether or not that has anything to do with what's happening here or any other place in the country, I have no idea. You know, the, 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 the place that ought to be worried is Florida Atlantic. That's the place that ought to be worried about losing their head coach. If Florida Atlantic doesn't crash and burn in their first-round game today, Dusty May resumes his spot as the hottest coaching commodity in America. He may be the one all these guys are after. I have no idea. Logic would tell you SMU's got an idea about what direction they're going. But whether or not that ties into anything that's going on around here, I'm not sure about that. But I am certain. I am absolutely certain that the players who have left so far are leaving because they don't feel like they've been playing enough. I wonder how appealing Muss still is across college basketball with this season. We heard from Nick Coffey earlier this week, who does afternoons in radio, that has a very high opinion of Eric Mossman. Again, they had an off year. They don't make the tournament. They finish under 500 for the first time in his career. I would still think he would be the hot commodity. Now, he might not be Dusty May. Equivalent because he is of their a hot commodity. Yes. He is a hot coach out there. He's yes. not the he's not the flavor of the month, but he is a very well respected coach. Yes, and May they they weren't as good. Uh, I I say that uh, they we'll see what they do today, and that maybe determines his fate. I know that it's, it's a little harder to hire a coach that just lost in the first round than let's say a coach that went to the round of thirty two or sweet sixteen. But what's up pans off for him. You mentioned though with Mark Battle and Brazil. Mark and Battle are going to have suitors in college basketball. I think Brazil is, even though he didn't have a great season relative to kind of our expectations. So you're going to have to invest in guys and sink more money in them than you probably did last year. That's an assumption. That's my assumption. And I wonder how that's going to sit with NIL people in Arkansas that are being asked for more money after a losing season, how responsive they are to that. I think you're competitive in basketball. I think you're really good in baseball. I think you're really competitive in basketball. And I think you're middle of the pack to end of the pack in in the SEC, which is still good in college football. But as we know from recruiting rankings, the SEC is a behemoth in football, and it's just hard to – that is an aspect of this, just retaining those three guys. It's really hard for my mind to compute paying them more – even though they were producing down the street. How do you know you're going to have to? Because they're going to have suitors in college basketball. And who's who's who's, who, who's coming after them? Mark. I would think a lot of people would be interested in in particularly battling Mark. I mean, you I don't have people it. are going to come after him and offer him some big raise. I think so. Okay. Again, it's it, it's it's one of those things where yes, as a whole season wise, do you think LLS got more at Arkansas than he did at Louisville? Absolutely. There's no question. He was on a terrible team at Louisville, but 
He got pulled into Arkansas not just because of NIL, but the prospect of going to the NCAA tournament, the prospect of winning. So which do you think happen. we're going to lose those guys? I think it's it's not entirely certain that they're going to be retained here in Arkansas because of the money well, They're going to be retained. I mean, they're not going to be asked to leave. No, 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 no. Again, from the, from the financial standpoint, because they're going to get paid more. I would bet my life on the fact that Tremont Mark and Caleb Battle will make more money than they did last year. I would bet any anything out there in the world that that's going to happen because of what they did individually. Their their value didn't go down. That's kind of how the world works. Yeah, their value didn't go down. They went up. And again, the what so I So re- what do you do? What do you do? Just say no and ditch them and start over? No. The point is you have to pay them more I even a- that. after a losing season though. But your alternative tie is to say, "Okay, no, we're not going to do it. You guys can walk." Is that what you want to do? No, I'm not saying that. But I, I, what I'm what I'm saying is, it's harder to convince people with money that are contributing to this fund that they have to contribute more to keep two guys on a team that were not 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 individually, but the team wasn't good this year. That does that make sense? I mean, that that, that is hard for me to invest. I think if, you're oversimplifying it, but I understand what you're saying. If I'm investing in a company, right? And they have a down. I get what you're saying. I understand the premise that you're coming from. I'm saying I, I don't think we're talking about. I think you're making it sound like they're going to have to go out and raise two million dollars to keep Brazil battling Mark, and I don't think that's the way it's going to work. If I had to guess what's going on between closed doors between Eric Musselman and Big Wigs or however they go about doing this. He's asking for more money than he did get last year because he's going to say, okay, this is the amount of money we got. This is what happened. We need more. And it's not just about those two individuals. And if you want to throw Trevin in there, that's fine. I understand it's, what you're saying. I I, 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 I hear what you're saying. That, that, I don't think we're talking about break the bank issues here. That is also a contingent factor in the possibility of Eric Musselman leaving is if he doesn't get – not just a the contract extension or potentially what he wants within his contract, which they need to raise his buyout. It's a little under a million right now. There's no way that should be what it is. Hunter's got to figure that out. There, there are jobs out there that could supply more money in NIL than what Arkansas is doing right now. They're not better basketball programs. They don't have better fans. They don't have better traditions. But NIL is taking center stage in all of recruiting and all of college basketball. We do so much supposing. When it comes to NIL, we just suppose we know how much Arkansas has got. We just suppose we know how much Louisville and SMU and all these other places. We just suppose that all these schools are going to come after Mark and battle in Brazil and pay him so much more money than we are right now. And we just suppose that our boosters are going to balk. We don't know. We don't know. Um, Let them work this thing out. They'll get it worked out. We'll have a basketball team next year. I don't believe that Arkansas, if they decide they want to keep battle mark in Brazil, I don't think they're going to get outbid. Now, maybe they may leave because they want to play somewhere else, but I I don't, I I just, I I don't, I don't believe that. Maybe I'm naive, but I don't believe that college basketball suitors are going to be just bolting to Fayetteville to steal battle mark in Brazil away from a team that went 15 and 17. I don't believe that. I think it's a different approach for each coach out there. And if coaches find value, which Eric Musselman found value in some guys that weren't on great teams this past year, Mark being the exception with that Houston team. Again, it didn't work here in Fayetteville, but other coaches think that, listen, if Caleb was a second guy or if he was the centerpiece, he'd be a big deal. Same with Mark. If he was the second guy or the third guy on this team, we could really have Ross. And you're right. You're 100% correct. This is all assuming. We, we have no... Uh, we don't have the financial seats in front of us, but we always refer back to NIL being the main core issue nowadays. So that leads me to believe when a situation like this happens and a guy goes elsewhere, when he it wasn't that he wasn't getting minutes like Battle and Mark, if one of them was to transfer, my my head is spinning because we have tied five or six different issues. I don't I, I don't even know what we're talking about. We began talking about our blocker and these other guys leaving because they know what Muss is going to do and we've morphed into a, this 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 wild discussion on what it's going to take to keep Battlemark in Brazil. And and, and uh, 
I'm not sure what we're talking about here. Um, maybe you can help me. The prospect of keeping your college roster with five guys already leaving. And the main guys, the core you talked about. It's going I to just think you're going down a, uh, a rabbit hole here when you're talking about Brazil, Mark, and, and you're changing the subject. We started with blocker, and you're, 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 you're going into NIL and what, what it's going to take to keep these other three guys, and I'm just lost. I think they all tie in together. I think okay. it all ties in together. Right. It's not just a one thing. It's a college basketball issue. It's not just a one. A guy doesn't leave just because of one thing. He doesn't leave just because of one thing. He leaves because of multiple things. And in this case, playing time is probably the most obvious uh, obvious thing. And I would agree with you on that. But that's not the only reason. Freshmen in college basketball, some guys just don't play. And yet they stick if around. If your stars were leaving all of a sudden, that's a sign. The guys who weren't getting to play, they were going to leave anyway. They were going to leave anyway. Whether we were speculating about what Eric Musselman's future holds, Layden Blocker, Joseph Pinion, all these other guys that have entered the portal, I lose track, Menefield, Denage, mm -hmm. they'd all left anyway. Every single one of them would have left. I don't know if they would have left if you had lost all these or if you had won and got in the NCAA tournament this year. I think oh, it well, I, I mean, uh, I don't agree with that, but all, but uh, what I said, what your uh, the original premise, and again, you're changing the subject. I, I'm trying to be respectful here, but you said a minute ago they were leaving because of Mus. I, now you're saying they might leave, or they wouldn't have left if they made the NCAA tournament. My point is, is all of these guys made decisions independent of what Eric Musselman's going to do. I don't believe they are related in any way, shape, or form. I said it was a possibility that they may know well, lots of that their head possible. coach is leaving, and that could potentially cause them to exit. For example, Joseph Pena didn't play a lick last year. He stuck around. They had a winning season down the stretch. It's not always about playing time. Some guys just like being a hog. Some guys just Joseph like playing. Joseph Pena stayed because he thought he was going to get to play this year. It, the the truth of the matter is, if Muss was leaving, if Joseph Pinion thought Muss was leaving, I think Joseph Pinion might be more inclined to stay. I mean, that's the truth. That's how I view it. You know, if you want to get right down to it, Pinion's people are mad because Muss didn't play him. I mean, that's the truth of the matter. And 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 I just don't think these guys are leaving because they've heard because Muss has told them he's leaving. I I, I don't I don't. I just don't see that at all. Now, you know, whether or not he leaves, whether or not there's a job out there that he finds more attractive, that's a different subject. Um, to me, that's, you know, that might be worth talking about somewhere down the road. But I think we're stretching right now. Hey, let's talk about McClarty Daniel for a minute. If you've been into a McClarty Daniel dealership, you know what I'm talking about. They make you feel welcome the moment you walk in the door. You know, look, you're going to get a great deal. They're known for making great deals, and it's kind of what their trademark is in terms of being an automobile dealership. And, you know, when you, when you become a customer, though, that's when you find out the value. That's when you realize that, uh, you know, when you've got to have your car serviced, they're going to be around on Saturday. And when you've got to have your car serviced, um, there's going to be a complimentary rental involved. That's the McClarty Daniel difference. Now, they've got six locations in Springdale and Bentonville, and you can always check out their selection at McClartyDaniel.com. All right, still a lot to discuss. This Arkansas baseball team gets a 1-0 victory over Auburn, some other NCAA tournament action last night. Stay with us. It's a fastball and fast break Friday edition of the Morning Rush. Hello there, homeowner. Roger Scott for Leaf Guard Gutters of Arkansas. Are you tired of dealing hey, was with there a gutters, spot climbing ladders, and worrying about potential damage to your home? Well, listen up to me now. Leaf Guard of Arkansas has got you covered. Introducing Leaf Guard, the only true one-piece seamless covered gutter system on the market guaranteed to never, ever clog. With Leaf Guard, you can kiss Goodbye to all the hassle of climbing up and cleaning out all that muck and mud and shingle grit. No more hiring someone else to do it, or worse yet, risking serious damage and issues by doing nothing at all. Spring is finally here, which means it's time for LeafGuard's famous ugly gutter event. LeafGuard will swoop in, take down, and haul away all those unsightly gutters at absolutely no charge, and you'll receive an incredible 60% off installation on a whole house LeafGuard gutter system. But wait, there's more. Ask about the 0% financing options and additional discounts for seniors and military personnel. Do not let ugly gutters ruin your 
your home's curb appeal or cause costly damage, call 501-664-5400 or visit LeafGardenMore.com to schedule your free estimate today. Leaf Guard of Arkansas, protecting your home one seamless gutter at a time. This is the Morning Rush. Trevor drives the team and throws it down with one hand. 0.9% financing on a new 23 or 24 GMC Sierra at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Save up to 6500 off with factory rebates on a new GMC Sierra truck or take 3750 off with 0.9% financing or 2.9% financing for up to 72 months on Sierra 1500. 6.2 liter engine excluded. Conquer with confidence in a new GMC Sierra from Harry Robinson Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Exit 11 off of I-540 in Fort Smith. More more good news from Wave Rural Connect. If you're on the Arkansas Valley Electric Shoal Creek substation, fast, affordable internet is coming soon. That zone opens March 25th, so get ready. Amazing internet, TV, and phone from a local provider in Ozark, Arkansas is coming to you. Pre-register online at signup.waveruralconnect.com or call 1-833-492-8372. Arkansas Valley Electric and Wave Rural Connect, changing the community we serve. Do you need help with your next project? Metters Lumber True Value is here to help. A family-owned business since 1936, the staff has more than 90 years of experience in construction and the hardware business. If they don't have what you need, they know how to get it, and they are more than happy to accommodate your special order. So whether it's building a new deck, a paint project around the house, or needing a new set of tools, Metters Lumber True Value has everything you need. With locations in Alma, Ozark, and Clarksville, and you can shop online at metterslumber.com. Metters Lumber True Value. If you knew all that Jody's Auto Service Centers can do for your vehicle and you, you'd never take your vehicle anywhere else. My fleet is small, 14 trucks and cars. It's a struggle every day with parts, employees, and scheduling. But one thing I never worry about is vehicles. Jody's has special fleet pricing, special in and out service, or free shuttle and pickup and delivery service. And they do everything, service, repair, and maintenance. That makes my life much easier. All my vehicles go to Jody's. Latest technology and highly trained technicians means we can do it all. From the most highly technical repairs to everyday oil change specials, tires, everything, even diesels. Jody'sAuto.com schedule free shuttle service or pickup and delivery. Get a tire quote, get financing. Jody's Auto Service Centers voted best of the best by our customers year after year. We're your neighbors since 1984 with three full service locations in Fort Smith and Van Buren. See for yourself at JodysAuto.com. If you are involved in a divorce or custody case, you want an attorney you can trust to guide you through the process. The attorneys at Hickey & Hole Law Partners have over seven decades of combined experience. Hickey & Hole have seen and heard nearly every scenario you can imagine, ready to put that experience to work for you to get the best results. Visit KevinHickeyLaw.com or give them a call today, 479-434-2414. Hickey & Hole Law Partners, things are about to get better. Are you an angler having trouble finding all the bait, tackle, and more for your fishing needs? Make a wake bait and tackle. Now located in Fort Smith next to Wits Marine. On North 11th Street is your place. Make a wake bait and tackle. Also has the largest selection of plastics in the River Valley. Reactor renovation. Bobby Garland. Soon. Mega Bass and more. Check out the dial rod and reels. Make a wake bait and tackle. 803 North 11th Street in Fort Smith. 479-926-9320. Also get your rod and reels repair. Come see us next to Wits Marine at Make a Wake Bait and Tackle. The paint store in Van Buren is still the place to go to when doing the job right really matters. Our unique line of Richard's paint products was chosen by me to perform for you. This is Sue and my 35 years of experience ensures you get the right paint and the right color. That's important to you and me. Thank you for your support. Come see what I'm talking about. 1414 Fayetteville Road, The Paint Store, Van Buren. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. You're listening to The Morning Rush with Ty Richardson, Tommy Kraft, and Chuck Barrett. Ty, I fill it out once in ink. There's no erasing. There's no going back. There's no changing things up. I play my gut, first instinct, write it down in ink. That's the way I do it. And welcome back into the morning rush. John Calipari is a text that we just, uh, God, I can't, I, I didn't think I'd ever get one of these texts, Chuck. He's like, can we stop talking about Muss and talk about if Cal's getting fired or not? <laughs> I'm talking about the fun stuff. Yeah, I don't, again, I've never, never thought I would, we would receive that text, but 
sure enough, we have. We will touch on that coming up in just a bit. But first, let's talk to our friend Larry Rath of Rath Auto Resources this morning here on a Friday, right in the middle of March Madness, Larry. Absolutely. It's going to be a great weekend. A lot of folks kind of been on spring break and been taking a little time with their families, and that's all fantastic. But people coming home and realizing maybe we need a little bigger car. You know, we spend a little time in there together, and it starts getting a little tight, and uh, sometimes you need a little bigger car. We can help you out with that. Rath Auto Resources in Fort Smith, Rath Mitsubishi in Springfield. If you're looking for a new car, check out these new Mitsubishis, folks. Check out the incentives, the 0% for 72 months. Look at the $1,500 cash rebates that you get as well. Lots of good incentives there. Plus, we have a lower starting price than nearly all these other competitors and a 10-year, 10,000-mile warranty. Look at the uh, 24 Mitsubishi Outlander, the 24 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEB, a really exciting product, the Eclipse Cross, the America's lowest priced new car, the Mitsubishi Mirage. We've got a selection of those as well. So if you're looking for new cars, we got them. If you're looking for used cars, we're stocked up, road ready, certified with warranty. You can't buy a better used car than a road ready, certified car. They're only available Rath Mitsubishi in Springdale, Rath Auto Resources in Fort Smith. Check us out online, rathauto.com. And that's Rath Auto Resources in Springdale and in Fort Smith. Larry, have a good rest of March Madness. Try and get some work done today amongst all those college basketball games. I will do my best. We'll, we'll squeeze out a little work, especially if people come on in and see us. It's going to be a great day. Thanks, guys, and y'all have a good one. Folks, come and see it. I get stuff from Larry, as always. James and Rogers, I promise we'll touch on Cal, but we've gone 30 minutes, and I haven't uttered a word about the number one <laughs> baseball team in the country, and that's the uh, – that's the – the what's the uh, I, I'm a freshman still technically in sports radio, Chuck, but I'm I'm doing my best to act more like a veteran as this baseball team won a victory last night. Part of the reason, Hagen Smith. Smith has the signal. Wheels and fires. Check swing upstairs. He did go. Strike three. That's ten now on the night for Hagen Smith. Give him sixty for the season. Ties our friend Scott Tabor, uh, who we had on earlier. If you missed that conversation, it was a lot of fun. You can find it in our Bud Light Morning Rush podcast. Another fantastic outing from him. Chuck, listen to this stat line. So, 12 strikeouts, 6 doorless innings, 87 pitches. Dude has a 1.24 ERA in 29 innings and he's 4-0 in the season and guys are hitting 116 against him this year. Yeah, I was reading this morning. I guess it was in... uh... It was it was in the Democrat Gazette. I think it was Bob Holt's piece that um, you know we you mentioned that he tied Tabor for fourth on the career strikeout list. Um, you know he wasn't even in the top ten until March first. You know at, at the beginning of the month he was not wow. even in the top ten in career strikeouts since then. And I mean if you followed Razorback baseball for a long time, you know every one of these names: Mike Oquist, Isaiah Campbell, Gerald Hannes, Dusty's dad. Charlie Boyce, Kevin Copps, Blaine Knight. Passed all of them just uh, during the course of this month. He's going to pass David Walling this year. Uh, Carnes is at 301. I'm assuming he's going to pass him. Schmidt's at 345. I don't know about that. But, um, you know, you're talking about some who's who in terms of Arkansas pitchers over the years. And, um, again, just to give you an idea about how fast it's happening, not even in the top ten at the beginning of the month. And, um, you know, he's he's got a chance to be number two pretty quickly. That's good perspective. I didn't know that and the fact that he's done it this quick. And, and we got to remember, guys, he had a terrible first outing. And some guys, if they rattle themselves, and he didn't have a great ending last year either. Let's not forget, postseason, Hagen Smith against TCU is not, not what we expected. So for him to just all of a sudden turn it on like he has in this stretch, pretty remarkable, and he's not done. I don't think there's any question about that. So the baseball team is supposed to be in action tonight. We'll have to wait and see. I think I'm going to use a Phil reference. I think it's going to get banged tonight. I don't think they're going to play in the rain. I think we're going to see two seven-game series tomorrow. That's a guess on my part, um, But that or seven-game inning tomorrow, excuse me, uh, two games. But we'll have to, to wait and see until we get an update on that. And one thing to think about, uh, you know, when you play on Thursday, you can't – Sunday's not an option. Mm -hmm. You have to get your games in in a three-day window. Otherwise, you get a competitive advantage over a team that plays Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They may have a rain out that can't be made up on Sunday. So it has to get in tomorrow. You can't wait around till Sunday. 
Yeah, that's a good uh, a good tidbit on that. So baseball, we'll see what happens. We'll keep you updated right here on ESPN Arkansas. Hit that line.com and a brand new Hit That Line Now app. All right, we got our SEC update coming up in just a bit. I also want to tell you about hog sacking. Uh, Chuck, there's something I'm going to have to tell you off air. Uh, <laughs> there's this spring break trip where you go to Conchin, Texas, and you try and sack these wild boars, which is about as crazy as a spring break event that I think I've ever seen. It's not quite like going to the, the beach or the no. ski slopes or <laughs> – the lake or whatever. A little different. A little different. So we'll tell you all about that as we wrap up here on a fast break in Fastball Friday. Before we do that, it is March Madness, and you need a place to watch the games. TGI Fridays in Fort Smith has a great happy hour. They're doing 10 wings for 5 bucks, I think, through Sunday. So I mean, think about how many wings you can get. Plus the happy hour today, 3 to 6 and 9 to close. half price drinks. $5 appetizers like potato skins, spinach dip, mozzarella sticks, pot stickers, and those steakhouse meatballs. Right off the interstate, again, come by and experience great March Madness game, some cheap drinks, and some awesome food at TGI Fridays in Fort Smith. All right, so we're going to wrap up the show coming up with some of those things I just mentioned. And I want to talk about your bracket. Maybe it's shot. Maybe somehow. You're doing good on hitthatline.com. Either way, we'll do that in the final segment of a Fast Break Friday next. Arkansas's home for the best sports talk. I absolutely love your show. I I can't listen to anything else on the drive to work in the morning other than the morning rush. The best selection of RVs is now even better at Wheels RV in Springdale. Wheels RV has added Brinkley RVs to the already loaded lineup of Grand Design and Forest River products. See the Brinkley Model Z, the latest innovation in luxury fifth wheels. And like always, every new RV comes with a lifetime warranty so you can camp with confidence. So stop in and find out why Wheels has been voted best RV dealer year after year. Wheels RV, five miles west of exit 72 off of I-49 in Springdale. Seek, explore, discover with Wheels RV. Whether you're Fishing for cold water bass on Beaver Lake or Table Rock, or fishing for a trophy brown trout on the Mighty White River, the Smithwick Original Suspending Rattlin' Rogue will catch them. It has that famous rolling action whether it's fished extremely slow or work fast in heavy current. This rogue suspends so it will stay in the strike zone longer, allowing you to catch more fish. Available at Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Academy, LureNet.com, and tackle stores all over the place. The Smithwick Original Suspending Rattlin' Rogue. Tommy Craft here for The Fence Man. Do you own a business that needs more security? Or maybe you just want a better look and more curb appeal? A new fence from The Fence Man can give you both. In business for more than 40 years, The Fence Man can custom install any type of fencing, gates, and control access for your business. Call The Fence Man and ask about 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit. 479-782-3936. That's 479-782-3936. The Fence Man. He ain't afraid of no work. Hey, this is Taylor Green. Arkansas quarterback and you're listening to the morning rush. Solve your roofing problems with Freedom Roofing and sleep soundly beneath a sturdy roof tonight. Locally owned, licensed, and insured, Freedom Roofing is a dependable company that will help you with the insurance claim process. Residential or commercial, they'll be there step by step. Call Keith Holt, 479-597-6777 or Rick Carlisle, 479-651-3247 today on all roofing services and break free from your aging roof. Good luck, Peyton Holt and Hog Baseball from Freedom Roofing. Diamond Center is proud to present our inaugural Whiskey and Watches event. Now is your chance to get your hands on that timeless timepiece you've been dreaming of. Between now and Thursday, April 25th, in our Fort Smith store, call or stop by to pre-order your watch. Then join us on Thursday, April 25th, for a night of celebration featuring rare whiskeys, cigars, and luxury watches. This is your opportunity to add that watch that you've always had an eye on to your collection. For more information or to pre-order your watch today, give us a call. The Diamond Center, celebrating a legacy of love. Hi folks, Larry Rath here for Rath Auto Resources and the Meineke Car Care Center where we have the biggest and best selection of premium pre-owned vehicles we've had in years. Many with low miles and those special features you're looking for and each one road ready certified with warranty. Be sure to ask about the weekly specials that can save you up to $4,000. Road ready certified used cars and savings up to $4,000. Two more reasons all the happiest drivers are rolling with Rath. Rath Auto Resources and the Meineke Car Care Center just north of Phoenix on Towson, Fort Smith. 
Tired of constant computer issues at work? And who knows what the real problem is? Is it the router? No, it's the hardware. Wait, they said it was the software. Call Hashtech Managed IT Services. Their multifaceted approach to IT support guarantees that everything is working at optimum performance. And Hashtech prevents the small problems from becoming big issues. Hashtech Managed IT Services in Van Buren. 479-802-4978. That's 479-802-4978. Hashtech Technology Without the Headache. Locally owned Lover One can handle all of your building needs. They've built their business on having great relationships with everybody from contractors and builders to the everyday build-it-yourself. Lumber One is a full-line door shop to handle all of your door, window, and trim needs. And along with lumber, roofing and drywall products, attic wall and floor insulation is available. Lumber One also does blueprint takeoff with access to design services with estimates available. So go where the pros go. Lumber One, located on Industrial Park Road in Van Buren. Hey, this is Ty Richardson for Jake Neal and his team at Jerry Neal's Barbecue. Jake's dad, Jerry, started cooking barbecue at Jerry Neal's in 1977, and Jake took over and has been doing the same thing ever since. I got ribs the last time I was there. Woo! Man, they were good. Don't forget about the catfish either. It's cooked to order, so it's hot and fresh every single time. The best catfish in the River Valley. Jerry Neal's Barbecue Catfish and Catering, 1823 Phoenix Avenue in Fort Smith. Remodeling your bathroom? Don't let your imagination be limited by out-of-the-box shower doors or tub enclosures. Arkansas Glass and Mirror is your local source for all things glass, including plexiglass, mirrors, and shower doors since 1964. Arkansas Glass and Mirror has more selections, better prices, and the experience to help you build the shower of your dreams. They also have the only showroom in the area to help you create those dreams. Professional installation and professional service. Only at Arkansas Glass and Mirror, 1316 South Zero, Fort Smith, or online at ArkansasGlassAndMirror.com. It's time to vote for your favorite high school player of the week. ESPN Arkansas and Shamrock Roofing and Construction are recognizing the most outstanding high school student athletes. Visit hitthatline.com each week to vote for your favorite athlete of the week. The high school player of the week is brought to you by Shamrock Roofing and Construction. No one can install a better roof at a better price with a better warranty than Shamrock. Visit them at shamrockroofer.com. Visit the nominees each week at hitthatline.com. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. Except we've got SEC bias. Deal with it. They're the best. In the SEC, it's just me and more. I know one thing. The SEC just got a little tougher. This is your SEC update on the morning rush. Brought to you by Burton Pools and Spas. Trusted pool experts and your source for backyard fun. Locations in Fort Smith, Springdale, and always online at burtonpools.com. Final segment here. SEC update. This was the SEC yesterday. <laughs> Man, it was bad. Starting with the Kentucky Wildcats for in disarray. Cal's going to get fired. It's going to happen. I would be, by the end of next week, really by the end of March, I'll get myself to the end of March, Kyle's not going to be the Kentucky basketball coach. Here is Gary Parrish yesterday on currently the state of Kentucky basketball and where everything is right now. We talked about this pregame. Like, Kentucky has better players. Kentucky is the better team. Kentucky's the school with the Hall of Fame coach. But Kentucky had been wildly inconsistent all season. That's why they were a nine-loss team when they woke up this morning and they'll go to bed and finish the season as a as a ten-loss team. And now, obviously, there are big questions about the future of that program. Because John Calipari is still owed $33 million. But the Kentucky fan board message board crashed tonight because people are going so wild. So they're going to have some real interesting conversations all throughout that state over the next coming days. Over $30 million is owed to John Calipari if he is let go by the Kentucky basketball team. Big C, where do you stand on this? Is Cal going to be retained? I say retained. Is he going to continue as the head coach of the Wildcats? Well, if money is a big issue at Kentucky, and I'm not sure if it is or isn't. Um, He's paid Mark Stoops a good chunk of change. Yeah, I would think I would think they wouldn't want to pay that buyout, but it wouldn't totally shock me just because of the way it's been for Kentucky. The fans have already like called for his head several times, which is part of the course for most fan bases when a when a coach isn't winning like they feel they should. I uh, you know, we saw with Texas A and M, obviously that that buyout wasn't too big. Man, Kentucky basketball though is a is a big time thing, and 
consistent first round exits. We've seen a trend now. It's not like it's happened one year. It's been a trend that the Kentucky just in the first round for whatever reason, I don't know if they just I don't know what it is, but they don't they don't perform well in the first round of the tournament and they haven't made a run in in a long time. It it's not looking good. I think it's about time to move on. I don't know if it'll be this year, but being being a, being a Kentucky program, you can pretty much pull anybody you want uh, from a program, another program, just because of the name alone and the tradition. And obviously, NIL, I'm sure, is okay there as well. They they always get players. Talent is not an issue. But I'm this is concerning to me losing to Oakland in the first round. I know it happens, but it shouldn't happen as often as it has for them. JT and Hot Springs says to Kentucky, rework Cal's contract to where the buyout is not as much if they fire him. I don't know who's Cal's agent. I don't know if it's Sexton. I don't know if it's one of the big dogs, but I can see that happening. This is unacceptable if you're a Kentucky basketball fan, but I'm not. That's one of the blue bloods of the sport. You can hate them all you want. That's one of the best jobs in college basketball. And for John Calipari... To have one NCAA tournament and only one SEC tournament win since 2019 is atrocious. It's embarrassing for that fan base. They have won one national championship at his time back in 2012. He can't keep living off Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd Grillchrist and that basketball team. The guy doesn't have an advantage anymore, y'all. It used to be he could get the best freshman in the country— And they'd figure it out in the postseason, and they'd go on a run. With the way college basketball is set up nowadays, and we see transfers, we see how the game has shifted, Cal hasn't figured it out yet. Saban figured it out. He said, we can't just win with defense anymore. We're playing Johnny Manziel and Hugh Freeze offense and and Lane Kiffin. We got to change course. And they did, and they kept on winning. Cal hasn't figured it out. Just yet. And for Kentucky fans, it's a problem. And it's going to get resolved by the end of this month, in my opinion. Just listen to this. Kentucky as a three seed was 19-0 prior to 2022. They lost to St. Peter's in 2022. And then they lost to Oakland last night. They're now 1-4 in their last five NCAA tournament games. The worst stretch since the 70s. Again. I think his reputation, I don't know if he wants it this way or not, his reputation to me is more just putting players in the league. I mean, which is good. That's a great thing for your school, great thing for everybody involved. But I wouldn't say he just went in games. and be, I don't think he really – I think he may be a little bit overrated, honestly. Titus texting in on the McClarty daniel hotline saying, if Musk went to Kentucky, then – Hog fans would have all the out of body experiences. They would be dumb not to pick up the phone and give him yeah. interest. And there would be interest. Let me tell you, there would be interest because there isn't a coach in college basketball outside of maybe Bill Self, Hubert Davis, and John Shire, North Carolina alum, Duke alum, and Kansas is just as good, if not better, than Kentucky tradition and wise in college basketball and the Big 12s going to have just I know the payouts are not as good in the SEC but those are probably three of the few coaches in college basketball that would not show any interest whatsoever in that job I think they would they would be smart to pick up the phone and call Muss how do you think Kentucky fans would view let's just say they hired Muss like how do you think they would view that hire I don't think it's a big enough hire for them yeah. but the deal with that is there's not really anybody in college basketball right now that would be big enough they don't have just some yeah. legacy coach out there that's killing it that's dominating that is a hellacious recruiter a couple of the legends have exited the sport maybe you could convince Jay Wright but I don't think Jay Wright would work in Kentucky he did it a different way in Villanova I don't know if his style his philosophy works I don't even know if he'd want to leave the desk at CBS that would be the first person I'd call I would again if I were them I would engage Eric Musselman assuming they make a move uh, but that's my thoughts. You it think may- Mark Few would be at Gonzaga I think that forever? would be an acceptable. I think that would be an acceptable job or call. He has not won a national championship just yet. They've been to two, but I think that would be actually. In fact, I would put that. That's a good point, Big C. I would put him above Jay Wright. I know Jay Wright's won two national championships. 
I, I do think Mark Few in Kentucky, that would, and they went into Rupp and won this year. So it yeah. would be the recency bias that fans would have. Text in for Mid-A and Glenwood. At least they made the tournament tie. We should be more embarrassed we didn't even make the NIT. It's a good point, MA. Your basketball program didn't have a great show in this year. So A&M plays Houston today. Or excuse me, I'm hoping they play Houston. They got Nebraska today. That's a big game. We mentioned the games yesterday. SEC, horrible showing. So the only team that wins is Tennessee. That blew out St. Peter's. Bruce Stan, Pratico Fishing is happy about that. Mississippi State gets blown out by Michigan State. Kentucky gets upset by Oakland. And then South Carolina gets dogged by Oregon. Not a great show for the conference. We'll see if they bounce back today. That's your burden in Paul, uh, pools and spas SEC update. Have you seen their showroom in Springdale? Right off the I-49 exit. It's right there. It's got like 18 different pools, both in-ground and fiberglass pool models. You can save up to $12,000. Twelve grand. you could be saving on one of these new pools. Now, I know it's March. It's going to be in the 70s, I think, today across Arkansas. Many pockets, or at least this weekend. Think about when it's 90 degrees outside, 100 in some parts of Arkansas, and you need a place to cool off. You don't want to have to go to your buddy's house. Not that it's that big a deal. You just want to be able to go to your backyard. Well, you can do so thanks to Burden Pools and Spas. Visualize the oasis. Visualize the fun you could have this summer. Call them. BurdenPools.com or 479-756-5511 in Springdale's. They build not just pools, but long-term relationships. All right. It's been a whirlwind of a show today. Got to go back to my man. Is it Ryan? Go- I forget it's Ryan or Jack Gokey. Guy that hit all those threes last night. Man, oh man, did he put on a show. Here's Gokey again, putting up a three and hitting. Gokey, here he is again, putting up a three. Here's Gokey. That's a deep three. It's gone. 12 points already. Here he is again. Oh, Gokey comes off a screen, fakes the three. Now he'll take it. <laughs> We're not a Cinderella. Not a Cinderella. They move on. What a win last night. What a win for Greg Campy. It's one of the four good college basketball games on yesterday. Hopefully we'll have some more today. Average margin of victory was 15 yesterday. I'm hoping it's better. That's not great. We need better games on today. And I think we'll get them here on this Fast Break Friday. Coming up this weekend, got a lot of things going on at Oaklawn. They've got the Eighth race, which is Hot Spring Stakes, the one mile. Uh, it's the three year olds not as good to run the Arkansas Derby. The heavy favorite is Brad Cox's train Nash at seven to five, but Carbone from Asmussen is at nine to two, and Footprint from McPete is at six to one. Will also be the mix. Lane is where is he at this? He's he's headed to the Gulf of Mexico. He's in the Gulf of Mexico right now, so he can't be on the phone. So we're doing this again. This Hot Springs. Oakland update is brought to you by our friends at Brothers Roofing. The ninth race, uh, the Essex Handicaps, the one mile, one eighth, looks extremely competitive with First Mission, the five to two morning line favorite, but Magic Tap War Campaign, Ain't Life Grand, and Lure Him All In are all six to one or less on the morning line. Could be a really good race. Today's pick, Friday pick of the day, uh, it comes in at the 10th race. Number five, risk profile from Asmussen Barn with Keith Asmussen riding the six to one shot. So that is his pick of the day. And then running for the 10K, claiming today the best level of the race this past year. It's quite not quite good enough at higher levels to beat Martini Blues in the number three to win the race. But I think the 34 race veteran with 19 career money finishes can be good enough to get the money. Again, his pick of the day. Number five, risk profile in the 10th race. Plus, we got the Arkansas Derby next Saturday. And that is Lane Whitman at the Railbird 333 on X. If you want to follow him and get his picks, does a great job giving them each week. But he's in the Gulf of Mexico, so he really him to me. I can't attribute it as well as he can, but those are your Oakland picks. It's brought to you by our friends at Brothers Roofing. Do you have damage to your roof? in the Central Arkansas and Hot Springs area. Brother Alexander has over 27 years of experience as an adjuster and in roofing. His crews have over 19 years of experience, and Brother provides free estimates in the most 
competitive pricing in the area with using the best materials. In Garland County and surrounding areas, call them at 501-249-5076 to arrange a, a inspection or give them a call in the River Valley at 479-353-3877 for our friends at Brothers Roofing. Big Steve, it's been a good show. Tommy will be back on Monday, back from vacation. You think he got us anything? Yes, I think he did. I think so, too. I got him some seasoning and some barbecue sauce. I got to lie. Be a little disappointed if we didn't get anything. Give him a hard time about that. Everyone have a great day. We'll give, keep you updated on Arkansas baseball tonight, or if we have two games tomorrow, right here on ESPN Arkansas. Hello there, homeowner. Roger Scott for Leaf Guard Gutters of Arkansas. Are you tired of dealing with clogged gutters, climbing ladders, and worrying about potential damage to your